Boop. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I am Bogus Mute Vector, but I'm mute, Nick, now. Nick, you're unmuted. Hello. Hi, John. Sakura has a terrible headache, Nick, so please do not be your loud, normal self. I, I, that's, that's a difficult one, but I will try. Okay. Let me. Like fail that endeavor. Crank you, you just up. lower my levels. I feel like that's the easiest route. <laughs> success. I had to crank you up a little bit. Mm. Have, have you have you seen Dragon Moog? Dragon Moog? Oh, let me see your Dragon Moog. Ooh, that's a pretty Dragon Moog. Yeah, that was at the New York Renaissance Festival. Oh, fancy, yeah. fancy. I'm I'm just collecting Ren fairs now. Oh, so there you go. But you, wait, you've been to the Michigan one, right? I've been to the Michigan one. I've been to the one in Dayton. You can go. It's fine. You're not naked. 
Bye. Oh, there's Sabrina. There's Sabrina. Everyone she point at Sabrina and say hi to Sabrina. Everyone point at her and laugh. <laughs> oh. oh, she closed the door. I love you. Um, Light of my life. They're over chest here. Sound the trumpet snake. Trumpet sounds quick. Uh, all of my suck. Mascot, how's it going? Is Sabrina a witch? Mascot wants to know. Uh, yes. Earl of Chester bows with the flourish in the direction of Sabrina. See, there you go. She is magical, and I love her dearly. Audio Eric, how are you? Happy Friday, indeed. Earl, it's good to see you. Kuno, how's it how's going? Kuno? Oh my gosh, it's so nice to see everybody. How are you guys doing tonight? Mascot, hello, Lip. Nick. Earl. Hello, Sakura. I am very hair. I need to shave. Holy mother of God! You're looking, you're looking, you're looking rustic, Nick. So do I. I, I need to shave. Um, I'm looking like the best kind of bread. Earl says it's looking especially fierce this evening. Um, Nick, I have a, an announcement to make. Guess who had their first tabletop RPG experience this evening? And that you've <gasps> was it. Roz? So, Roz has been reading this book called Fart Quest. It is a, a fantasy uh, book series for kids. It's a novel. Um, and it's very humorous and very silly. And uh, she loves it. And in the, she just got... We've been at a library day every Tuesday's library day. And she got the second book in the, in the series. And in the back of it, it said... Uh, Play the Fart Quest game. And she's like, what? And there's a website. And she's like, I wanna I wanna do that. I wanna play that game. And she thought it was a video game. And it's like, oh, it's a tabletop game. <laughs> it's got a map and a little adventure and little player cards and die, you know, you roll your dice and stuff like this. But it's very basic for kids. Um and she attempted it tonight with uh Gwendolyn and my wife, Brittany, and uh they failed. But uh it's okay. As you do. As you do. Um, I had to be the GM, and I had to, to break it to them that they all died, because my, uh... Daughter? That feels irresponsible. Well, here's the thing, right? Um, oh, Sakura's game tonight was canceled. I'm so sorry, Sakura. Um, Sakura says, I played AD&D, AD first edition when I was her age. Sakura, same. Is Fart Quest as difficult as Pandemic? Not quite. You were a harsh dungeon master. Is this game? Is it a fart master? I wish it was fart master. Um, but yeah. the thing, the thing was, is that like, there's no way around it because it's a, it's very linear. Like, uh, so you have a map and they have the rooms that they go into and stuff like this, and they have combat. But like, combat is very much like you have this ability; it does this much damage. Typically, that's how it goes. And we the that mouse game. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's dude. Fuck. What was that called? Uh, um. Mice and, uh, Mice and Mystics? Mystics. Mice and Mystics, yeah. yeah. Um, that's a lot of fun, too. It is, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that, but a lot simpler. Um, and, uh, so the problem was that they actually did something that was, I mean, it still has that tabletop RPG thing of, like, if you do something stupid, something stupid's gonna happen. And they did something stupid. <laughs> and, uh, and it's like, there's a, it, the game is also, like, not not well designed so there's lots of if they pick the wrong party members things can like characters that they, they pick things could go awry very easily i mean it is it is an rpg yeah based on the fart master series yeah. but so she lost and she was really upset about it but i was like hold on hold on like Part of the fun is trying again, and you can do pick a different party member, different party composition, and figure things out. It's it's meant to be a challenge. Cannoli. Turning that down. That is so loud. Sorry. It's okay, could only thank you, my friend. How many whoa dude 19 months uh streak 
21 months total. Holy crap, dude. Almost two years, Kanoli. How are you, my friend? It's good to see you. You do not need to apologize. That was uh, an austere uh, announcement of your presence. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, it went well, though, for her overall. And she... Uh, she she really wants to try again and like she's really excited about the, the idea and she's really thinking about like oh what characters would go well with who and and oh she was like well what about these how much hip health points do these monsters have and i was like ah you gotta play as this one character who has the ability to uh read about monsters in their little monster manual and she's like can i do that right now while i play by myself and i was like no you have to play the game with everybody you have to play by the rules and She's, oh, she's gonna be a min maxer, bro. She's gonna be a min maxer. I know she was asking that. I was like, no, 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 no. She's gonna go into every combat already having read the monster manual. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and as like, a Tarask can't do that. Yeah. That's, a Tarask can do everything. It can't do that. No, and yeah. see, that's the thing. I'm just like, ah, bah, 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 bah. But the kids were laughing. I was playing it up. I mean, you know, it's it's really basic. I don't have it much. To, I, like I just read. I just read what they tell me to read, and um, and it's really basic. But I uh, I was just improvising and giving them a hoot and holler, so they were enjoying it a bunch. So yeah, hi Nick, are you ready to I beat know. this game? I'm having the Nordic Spring. I thought you were just having beer. coffee. What the heck? It's also I I did you not know that I always mix my stimulants with. The presence. You know what coffee always goes here. pairs so well with booze is coffee. Coffee and booze. <laughs> yeah, they go together real well. Hash has beat this game. I know, Hash. It has, by the way, been a delight, I will say. What do you think, Nick? Have you enjoyed this so far? Yeah, it's been a very good game. And yes, uh, Dogfish is uh, a good beer. Yeah. Uh, the Hichi were not in the fart quest. I wish Where they were. Where are they headed? So we have one more. We have one more location to or to activate, and then we're guessing the final phase of this game because I know that's not going to be the end. Obviously, there's going to be some big culmination against the bad guy because we because ha because also we have the that that secret place. Do you want to do you want to try to figure out the secret place that secret location in the in the I station? Want to do that one before we do this in case we might like soft lock ourselves. Okay, we can try. Because we have time. Like, it doesn't look like it's a ticking clock. In the What's that, Nick? What do we need? What did we need? We need the tuning system? fork. Okay, how do we get the tuning fork? Well, so hold on. We might get the thing for the tuning fork. Does our gun work? No, it doesn't anymore, remember? Yeah. But we haven't had to worry about carrying too much, Nick. Yeah, I've noticed that. There's no real inventory management system. Lip says, I imagine Far Quest makes heavy use of gaseous form. So, Lip, what happens is it's about these fledgling uh, adventurers who are students under these bigger adventurers. And those bigger adventurers die tragically, and they have to take up the mantle and try to figure out how to survive and be heroes. And But the main character, so Pistulary, from the perspective of uh, this character, Fart, his name is is Bartok, but when he got to pick his first st spell, he picked gaseous, or he picked like, like, it wasn't gaseous form, but it kind of was, where you can turn things into fart clouds. And uh, so everybody gave him that nickname and made fun of him, and him and his quote unquote friends have to go and, and do adventures and stuff like this. It's really fun. They're trying to catch the, uh, the golden farts of a, of a, like a, llama or something this this magical llama or something in the cave it's a delight so anyways um are you familiar at all john with delicious in dungeon delicious in dungeon yeah no what is this it's a manga series you're a manga series uh, they're, they're in in dungeons and they 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 kill things and eat them i don't know if it'd be appropriate for children i don't think it's that there's a lot of violence in it. But there's a lot of like weird monster anatomy and then how to best cook that food anatomy. Out. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. She has read um, the the Zelda um, Link to the Past. I think it's Link to the Past. Maybe it was Ocarina of Time. I don't know. I think it's Link to the Past. Uh, like Mango? 
She's read that. Oh, so she should join us in the Litter Pixel podcast. And she read um, the the Super Mario Brothers um, manga. Way back in the day. It's an oldie, but they translated it in English and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's also a and d thing for kids. Is there Sakura? I mean, that, I mean, oh. Didi. It's fine. Are you ready to play this game, Nick? We can try. Yeah. Let's try to figure this out. So let's go north. North. Up. South. 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 Okay, so... We have to get this tuning fork, because that's going to get us access to... um the secret passageway. If you keep going north, you'll end up going south. You take the tuning fork from the pedestal, the room is filled with the sound of an obnoxious klaxon, and a synthesized voice states, warning, these exhibits are protected by an optical pattern recognition system. Replace artifact immediately, or you will be placed under arrest. So we need something that looks like a turning fork. Yeah, but there's this other thing over here. Drop tuning, tuning fork does the same thing. Did anyone watch the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? Audio error. Of course I did. Hello? That did not do the right thing. Oh, put, uh... Put tuning fork on display. Or on shelf. Or something. Stand. Stand is what you want to do. Oh, hold on. Um... Pedestal is what it is. Pedestal. So put tuning fork on pedestal. Return tuning fork. <laughs> tuning fork. No. No Sakura. Earl, we were actually talking about the World of Warcraft movie in our Discord recently. A lot. Right? I feel like that was in my Discord. Um, it's the Warcraft movie. Ah, oh, that's what it is. Um, return. I did try return. Oh, return. Oh! What? Doesn't work. Oh, okay. Um, so there's the the toaster. Um, what is that one? What is that called? What toaster? The thing on the right. What is that thing? There's a on a stand. There's a Hichi device. Look at the device. I know that these two are are tied together. The strange looking device is about the size and shape of a toaster oven. An opening on one side reveals mirrored interior surfaces. On top of the device is a circular depression about 10 centimeters. Yeah, put the disc in toaster. The device begins to hum and the air above the disc shimmers. Huh, okay, um, do you, th- oh. Can we put things in it, or does it just shimmer? They eventually would have gotten around to the WoW era if they made any money to make the sequels. I know, Sakura. That was a pretty decent movie, I was going to say. Nick, did you ever watch the Warcraft movie? Nope. Mm. It's Not actually pretty good. No? Nope. Not out of any, like... I guess no knowledge of these things, right? It's not something you have any any stake in that claim. Yeah, exactly. It was actually not too bad. I do weirdly have a uh, t-shirt from that movie because very briefly I was a part of the uh, of the stupid consumerist box thing. The stupid consumerist box thing? Like, what was it called? Loot Crate? Yeah. Oh, Loot Crate. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was I was young and stupid. R.I.P. Loot Crate. Pay respects. Press F for Loot Crate. Um. So hold on. So can we put F- something? Can we put things in this? Like put. Try to put the tuning fork in there, cause like I feel like maybe we can like store it, and then like I don't know, cause we have to put something back in it. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make a lick of sense. Oh. Oh, hold on. As you place the tuning fork into the device, an image of it appears floating above the disc. The room is filled with the sound of an obnoxious klaxon and the synthesized voice is warning. Okay. 
So do we take the disc and then put it on the thing? As you remove the disc, the device ceases its humming and the shimmering of the air vanishes. The image of the tuning fork remains floating above the disc. No, it's not the... Oh, it's above the disc? Wait, whoa, 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 what was happening there, Nick? You put the hologram on the pedestal. Wait, what? Yeah, we made a hologram. How do we make a hologram? The klaxon stops and the voice is alarm canceled. Hold on. So when we put the tuning fork above the device, it made a hologram on the disc. On the disc! Yeah. And then we took the disc and we put the disc, disc on, on the thing. thing. It says it recognizes visuals and visuals alone. You I see. Take the tuning Josh Grams, welcome to the stream. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. I How are you also doing? think it's a dumb puzzle. I, oh yeah. Did you, like do you that. have to say tuning fork or just fork work? Probably fork just works, but we're weird. We, we are extemporaneous by nature, right Nick? Sure. Yes. Welcome to the stream, by the way. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. How are you doing this evening? I'm guessing you're a fan of Text Adventures. Obviously. I mean, you're from... You're on the, you're on the Discord, right? I think you are. I, my brain is right now is just spoiled meat, I will add. It is... Fork I'm, does work. I'm doing terrible in my poor brain. Yes, you are. Of course you are. We just had that long conversation about your awesome dream uh, dream uh, awesome Text Adventure. Fork would have worked. What would have worked, Nick? I, I wrote pick up fork, but occasionally I can be rather low. Okay. The darkness grows. I apologize. My poor brain. Um, all right, so we have the tuning fork, so then let's go north. My brain has spoiled me. I might need to steal that. Exactly. North. North once more. Up. I mean, Sam Barlow, her story, once tweeted that anyone who writes X instead of examine isn't a real adventure, text adventure player or something like that, so valid. Yeah, there were people... Nick and I have come across many instances of people telling us, you could just do this to... Like, why don't you just... Uh, uh, why don't you just type it like this? And why don't you type that? And it's like... Because uh, we just want to type it like this? I don't know. Nick's at the controls. I'm, I'm just here. I'm just... I'm just I'm the, the, the wash up the controls here. I'm the, I'm the the memory, the bank. Nick can't find his way out of a paper bag, but I can remember talking? the maps of everything in my head. <laughs> I mean, no, I just depend on you to remember. This is true as well. If I were on my own. But I'm a, I'm a, I am a uh, a mapper. Uh, I believe it is west. It is. Okay. Um. Oh, this room. Yeah. Uh, the entire time. Uh, so use tuning fork or hit wall with tuning fork. Because use it doesn't work. Hit yeah. wall with tuning fork. <laughs> no. You it stretch produces. the tuning fork against the wall. It produces an eerie humming tone. A blister appears in the wall. Look at the blister. The other west flat wall is marred by a light blue blister about a foot in diameter and six inches in depth. Upon closer inspection, you notice that the blister has a rectangular slot with two square holes in the center of it. Insert. Insert fork. Fork into hole. You insert the turning fork into the slot in the blister. You hear a muted humming noise, and the tuning fork slowly recedes into the slot. A keypad appears above the blister. Okay. Whoa. Oh crap. Um, hold on. Do I have the did I write down the number? Oh god, there's a lot of numbers on this piece of paper. That's not my numbers. Is it on here? I you didn't don't. save either, John. Huh? You didn't save. Can we exit? Can you hit escape or something? I don't know if we get the tuning fork back though. 
the keypad disappears and the tuning fork is ejected from the slot. Retrieve it. Um, we have a piece of paper that, a slip of paper. Look at the slip of paper. I'll write this down. You could for just hide and wa wait for the guy to do it again. No, we have the slip of paper that has the, the, the code on it. Oh, do we? Yeah. Slip of paper. It's on the thing on the left. Yep. He dropped it, remember? Yeah. Three, three, one, two, one. Okay. Now, uh, put, insert, yeah, tuning fork. Into holes. There you go. All right, it was three, three. Three, three, one, two, one. One, two, one. Cool. Okay. And the tuning fork is ejected from the slot. Retrieve it suddenly a section of the wall before you disappear is to reveal a portal. Uh, in. You're in a large room about the size of a high school gymnasium. The room is empty, except for a panel set into the west wall. The portal through which you entered remains open to the east. Um... Look at the panel. The panel has a four-sided diagram etched into it. At each vertex of the diagram is a group of Hichi characters. Three of these groups are eliminated. Look at characters. The panel has a four side diagram. Okay, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't tell us. Um. Oh, I know what this Please. is. I know what this is Nick. What's it? We've done three of the four planets. Oh, so we need to do one more. Need to do the other one. That's it. All right. That's what it's so out. Oh, yeah. That's good to know. Okay, so east. Down, down. We're going to do it now, Earl of Chesterwick, my friend. South, 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 south. South, 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 south. Right, um, in, and then our last one. So, yep, yeah, so we have the coordinates for all of them. So, Earl, we were informed of a secret mission that essentially the Hichi were destroyed by these race of interstellar beings called the Assassins. That essentially, as soon as any spacefaring species uh, reaches a certain level of exploration power knowledge etc etc it gives off a certain power you know radiates a power signal of sorts that identifies them and then they go out and wipe out that race and we are on the verge of triggering those assassins so we learned that the hichi had a defense system we're told and nick and i are very incredulous about this claim that they made these people who are telling us might actually be the assassins themselves um and they have a defense system that we have to go and activate. Ooh, a sullen red giant dominates the view screen when you return to normal space. Your ship is too close to the star and is quickly incinerated. What? Did you enter that correctly, Nick? I apparently fucked it up. Did you save before that? Nope. Josh Graham says, I think the first character was wrong. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, Nick, 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 stop, stop, stop. All right. Where did it send you? Hold. Where did it send you? What do you mean? Oh, I, oh, I thought, I thought it like, I thought it sent us back. So sorry, restore. Yeah, you're right. Can we make the sound of incineration? Okay. So we're gonna have to. I, we don't need to do the tuning fork thing again. I guess not. I guess not. Because so, we know what it does and it yeah. doesn't help us. Uh, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go south. South. Nick was the Which brains of the operation. I haven't fucked this up a single time, <laughs> and then suddenly Josh Graham shows up. <laughs> it's not Josh's fault. Do not blame Josh for this. Josh I is a saint. Josh. I dare you, Josh. I've done this right every single time, and then here you are. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so we were doing this one, yeah? Yes, the last one there, okay. yes. Okay, that's correct. Josh, have you played any of the Legend Entertainment games? Out of curiosity? I love them. That's uh, correct. Yeah. Double check my work. I'm double checking your work now, Nick. I trusted you. The one time I trust you. That's you correct. Trust me this entire time. You should, okay, yeah. No, Josh, I a lot of people yeah, that's correct. What if they are sending this on a death mission? Um, a lot of folks typically play the newer stuff, and I very much enjoy your old stuff. I enjoy the new stuff as well. I'm, I don't have as much experience with newer text adventures and interactive fiction. Um, but uh, I love I love me some old stuff. Oh yeah, this I know, is. I'm pretty sure mascot that John claimed to be the brains of the operation. I'm the hand. I said the memory. The memory. That's all. Uh, do the info. Don't make me. Please. Orbiting third planet in the Nimir star system, spectral class G. Planet has breathable atmosphere. Surface gravity is 1.1 G. Sensors detect large concentration of Hichi metal. Perfect. Land, so baby. To land. We're going to go through the square hoops of doom. So then I have to ask you this question, Josh. Do you consider this to be text adventure, even though it has stuff like this in it? That was the looks of the operation, like face from A-Team. So Chris says, I'm a 3200 TPM laptop drive. <laughs> I'm a, uh, it's like a Dreamcast drive is what I am. Uh, the, the disc reader. To humor. To humor! Don't, James, or Josh. Don't, 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 so. Hey! To humor. To humor. It's just, it's gonna to humor, to humor streak going. Just to humor over and over again to the point where it's just a cacophony. To humor. Yes! <laughs> Earl, I'm gonna let you know right now that uh, the Hichi, little did you know, invented cheeseburger pizza. Plateau in which you've landed is surrounded by a tall, spindly rock formation. <laughs> or by tall, spindly rock formations. Mountain trails lead down to the northeast and west. There is a natural archway to the south through which a ledge is visible. Your ship is here and the cabin hatch is open. Okay, um, let's go. S you saved, right? I did. You did? Okay, south. Did. South, then, I think. Let's go through the archway. You squeeze through the small archway and emerge on an outcropping that provides barely enough room to stand. Vantage point. The tiny rock outcropping on which you are now standing provides an impressive view of the surrounding terrain. Your precarious position on the outcropping causes your pulse to quicken noticeably. You cling to the northern rock wall that contains an archway through which you can see an area of level ground on which your ship is situated. A river winds through a deep chasm thousands of meters below you. On a far shore, you notice a metallic glint. Your score has just gone up by five. Okay. So we got to find a way to retrieve that from a great distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice art. The art in this is fantastic. Josh, it is really, really good, and it's very evocative. Oh, I don't think we can... I don't think we have what we need right now. Jump down. Okay, can you just do down? I'm curious. You lean over the edge of the chasm and consider that your chances for survival after a fall into the canyon uh, below will be slightly less than nil. Want to give it a try anyway? Yes. <laughs> no pomp and circumstance there. Okay, you jumped to gruesome death in the canyons below. Like, we don't have time for your nonsense and tomfoolery your choice we literally told you you will probably die do you still want to do it yes okay you died <laughs> it's like the the person who uh the dm in a tabletop game who is sick and tired of people's shit and they're literally like oh i want to kiss the dragon okay and the dragon eats you you're dead <laughs> all 
Are you sure you want to do that? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, you died. Oh, why? It's not fair. It's like, dude, dude come on, man. I want to eat the gelatinous cube. Okay. Um, so north. In Delicious and Dungeon, you get to eat the gelatinous cube. But you got to cook it properly. You got to prepare it. And kill it. Yeah. The dragon kisses you and requests marriage. Yep. Roll, uh, roll a charisma check. <laughs> you failed. You're now married to a, a dragon. Uh, it is a... Wait a second. You fail your charisma check and you get married? Uh, because the dragon requests marriage for you. I'm mean, trying to get out of it? I guess if you want to, if you want to get into it, then you find out it's a male dragon, and then things get complicated. Anatomy, uh, North, please. <laughs> I'm stupid. I mean, there's always other options. There's always other options. It's just a lack of imagination, really. Uh, northeast. Nick has considered this. I'm gonna leave it at that. Sprinting down the mountain trail at breakneck speed, you arrive I at a small. If they have hemipenes. Have what? Hemipenes. What? Hemipenes. What are you? Hemipenes. 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 What is that? For snake. Uh, so the. This is a thing I learned recently. The the genes related to uh, leg creation are not entirely un. Uh, connected to the things that also lead to uh, male genital formation. Um, the heavy peen in snakes is a penis. Okay. That that does a, a one of these. It does a one of what, Nick? A one, a one of those. Okay. So you got like a base penis. Okay. And then forks. Oh, a forked penis. Okay, this makes sense. Yeah, they got a forked penis. So I'm wondering if dragons have a hemi pee. They probably do. They are reptiles, right? Yeah, I'm not sure how common it is in uh, <laughs> all reptilia. Let's let's look. No, let's not. Hi, Valindras. How are you today? Hemi Nick, penis. Nick, stop this. We're not going to find out. Hemi penis. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is what we're doing. No, this is not what we're doing, Nick. You're going to go. We're going to read this. Sprinting down the mountain trail at breakneck speed. Oh, oh it's found in uh, squamates. Squamates? So all lizards. Okay. Oh, good. so yes. Yeah. So then yes. Well, not all reptiles, but all oh. squamates. So and uh, snakes are phylogenetically speaking lizards, but without the feet. Yeah. And I mean, Komodo dragons are lizards, right? Do they have hemipenes? Yeah. Do Komodo dragons have hemipenes? Do Komodo dragons have hemipenes? Because if they do, then dragons do, right? I mean, they do. Then there you go. Dragons do. Komodo dragons have hemipenes. I want to see a picture. No, Komodo I. Yo, oh, God. I'm not going to show anyone. I'm just going to look for me. <laughs> this, is, this is for my benefit. Psychopath. Ooh, that's gnarly. That's dry. Psychopath. Why is that? Oh, it's got barbs. Yep. Dragons have barbed penises. Double barbed penises. Uh, yes. They got uh, double barbed penis. That's. Okay. Can we, can we please? Please. The more you oh. know. Can we please? Can we please? Oh. Think? Can we please I continue? The, the level... You wanna? Oh, you wanna unsee that now? Okay. Well, guess what, Nick? You spent the last ten, uh, the it ten last ten minutes talking about this. It's fifteen. I know. It was less than that. I will interest. So this is my friend Nick. We've been friends for a very long time. He is my best friend, and uh, he almost currently almost eleven years now. Almost eleven years now. He lives far away now. He used to live here, and um, and so we play. Live even further away. I know. Soon you'll live even further away. Uh, so we will play text adventures. Um together uh nick i don't know how that's gonna work what do you mean how are we gonna do this will it be yeah. i guess you'll be awake longer like i mean it'll be, be earlier better. for you but it's like your schedule i mean like i guess six o'clock you'd be you should be home by On six o'clock yeah i guess that's yeah. true um so that's good then that makes me happy well it's a friday today but don't really it's saturday also i won't be on a teacher's schedule anymore i'll just be doing whatever the fuck i want oh that's the best okay I'm going to read this. 
Can I, old for the love would of God, like I would like to read the halfway point, yeah, Nick. Go ahead. Sprinting down the mountain trail at breakneck speed, you arrive at a small level area about half of the way down the mountain. The remainder of the descent looks like it's going to be extremely easy. The halfway point on the steep mountain trail gives you a chance to scan the terrain of the valley below you to the north. Gently rolling desert hills stretch north to more verdant meadows and occasionally stands of trees. One especially large tree is visible far to the northwest. The valley is bound on the east by a deep chasm gouged over the eons by a winding river. About a thousand meters below you to the northeast, you spot the wreckage of a small Heechee ship. It looks like you might have some company. Trails lead away in several directions. There's a pile of rocks on the ground. And look at those piles. Nick. Hot piles. Uh, Nick enough. Huh? Enough. What, what did I do? Why are you throwing down freaking Pokemon? <laughs> did no, they have they, heapings too? Is that was that what you're trying to say? That Pokemon have heapings? I didn't say anything. Why are you reading so much into the text? <laughs> Sakura's the best. Anyway. <laughs> uh, it's not right. Look at the, the rocks. Sounded, yeah, we're going to look at what now? The rocks. Look at the rocks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Upon closer inspection, you notice that the pile of rocks is actually a crude cairn pointing southwestward from the halfway point. So go southwest. I like that we got the Wait, single point. That takes us back here. Northeast. Okay. So we got we a point for looking at northeast? this. No, we can't go northeast. Um. Hold on. So it says, "Where's the where's the ship at?" Hold on. Northeast. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, it's to help get us back if we get lost. That's what it does. Okay. All right. So northwest. So exhilarated by your jog down the mountain, you turn around and gaze with pride at the distance you traveled in such a very short time. The mountain trail rises steeply to the southeast up the <laughs> side of the mountain. Other less traveled trails lead off toward the northwest and northwest. An old man with wiry beard looks like he's been waiting for you at the trailhead. As you approach, Energetic Conjure walks up to you and introduces himself. Howdy, stranger! The name is Becker. <gasps> Becker. The old man extends his right arm toward you in greeting. Do you know who this is? The guy who went missing? Yes. He was the prospector. He was the prospector who went missing who made like the most money ever. Yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, shake his hand. Shake hand. No, it's not going to work that. Just shake hand. Just shake hand, Nick. You're overcomplicating this. The, the purser. Well met, says Becker. Maybe you're okay. I've sort of had my fill of people and wasn't looking for company. But if you've got a mind to hang around here, the least I can do is be a friendly host. Becker pauses, studying you for a moment. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Listen, baby. He's droning on with his life story. I came here as a young and very successful pilot. By the uh, time I was 35, I'd flown just about every kind of ship and mission imaginable. I was filthy rich and seemed to have a special knack for finding Heechee stuff and coming back alive. He's thrown it on with his life story. When I crashed here and realized I probably wouldn't be making it back home, I was overcome with despair, but after a while, I got over that and started filling my days with the work necessary to keep me alive. I was damned lucky that this planet has a breathable atmosphere, I'll tell you that. Noli says, I put an onion in my belt, as was the practice at the time. <laughs> I put an onion in my belt, as was the practice at the time. It makes sure that you have a girl. That's true. 
Anyway, I began cataloging all of the various plants and animals around here and grew to love each and every Let one the of them. Grow. Yep, studying and caring for the creatures on this plateau has given me a peace of mind I hadn't imagined possible during my days as a hotshot pilot. I especially love their hammy peens. No. Well, ponders Becker, I guess that's the end of my story. There's a lot of other stuff I could tell you about, but you don't seem that interested. Have we made a mistake somehow? No. Did you? Uh, huh. There's a lot of stuff I could tell you about, but you don't seem that interested. I've got some errands to run, so I'll be going now. As he wanders off, Becker turns to you and says, Come by my house sometime and we'll share some conversation. I think, I think that's just normal. Yeah. By the way, take it slow across the bridge. I'd hate to have my new guest fall to an untimely death. He laughs himself. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Alligators okay. aren't squamates, but do they have hemi -pee? Oh my god. This is this is when Nick Nick takes pleasure in hijacking. He likes to take over, take control of this game, and then decide to go on these wild tangents. This is his life. Think you can get it inside mine? Uh, I'm not finding it quick. Uh, Craig, uh, the walrus, wants to know if uh, you think you can get it inside his. The hemi peen, that is. Um, okay, so... What did we do? We did northwest, right? So southeast would take us back. Um, so go north. Oh, a meadow. A small, desolate meadow is home to a large elm tree. One especially long branch extends out from the tree's trunk. Dozens of seeds lie about the base of the tree. On the other side of the chasm, you notice something small and glassy. Look at seeds! I get to be an archaeobotanist, but in a game, John! You're very loud, Nick, now. I'm sorry, I was excited. I see that. Get him! Seeds. No! No! Give me the seeds. Let me burn don't them. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do then this. I can identify don't them. do this. Don't do this to me. Do not do this. Let to me, me burn the seeds. Do not do this to me, Nick. You can do this. You can do this. Don't burn the seeds. Do stop this nonsense. Burn the seeds. Do you see that setting fire to the M seeds would cause all I'm sorts of smoke screen. that would obscure the screen? I did see that. Um, can, okay, so can you look again? I want to see what's going on. Doing a real job in the game. Yes. What do you want me to do? Look. One of the elm seeds starts spinning and is soon airborne. It flies around the tree a few times and then settles back to a stationary position. I wonder if that can tell us the direction of the wind. I don't know if that's helpful. Um... So I assume we want to climb the long branch. Um, no. Why, why, why I say long branch? Why? Climb the tree? Yeah. Climb tree. <sighs> okay, so go north. Oh, there's another cairn. I wouldn't call this a cairn in that, like, it's just a pile of stones pointing in a direction. Yeah. Typically, cairns are, like, markers for graves. Um, so go northeast. Oh, okay, scramble up the mountain trail to the northeast and, quite breathless, come again to a level, to level ground far above the desert valley. Pinnacles, a rope bridge stretches south eastward across a chasm. It connects to a doorway on the opposite side of the chasm. The sound of rushing water in the river far below is barely audible. A large nest is perched high in a formation nearby. Other than the bridge, the only other apparent way out of here is back down the steep trail to the southwest. You see a coil of rope here. This is his bridge. We need to get that rope, though. Oh, yes, Sakura. Yes. Sakura wants to let you know... Uh, she's, uh, linking to, um, the, the passing away of Michael Berlin, 
who was infamous for not only the creation of Bubsy, but also making very prolific text adventure games for the company Infocom, which Nick and I have played uh, two of those games and loved both of them, uh, Suspended and uh, Infidel. So when we do the Interactive Fiction Club in May, when we do classic stuff again, um, it's going to probably be either Suspended or Infidel. I'll probably want to do Infidel because Suspended is more well known and Infidel I think is really actually interesting and, and really good and very iconoclastic for text adventures of that time and kind of going into that and why is that a good thing or a bad thing for the genre at the moment it's really yeah. interesting we also i think have reviewed suspended we have yes in the literate pixel podcast we did yeah um sorry uh so a weird bird which at second glance looks like a pterodactyl swoops down mm -hmm. from a nest built into a pinnacle above you and lands on the path between you and the rope bridge did we get the the rope? Want some ra? Of course you do. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so loud. What is wrong with my levels? Hold on. I'm gonna, I've cranked Nick up as high as I can. I love saying that in WoW. Want some ra? Of course you do. Oh, of course. Of course you do. Um. So uh okay, uh, get the get the rope. So we can't get through there yet. Right? Save, uh, no, save, 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 save. Tie it to the tree. Yeah, save it for me. No, we have to we have to tie it to like our ship and take it so that we can go down and get that piece of metal. In that big chasm. So just try uh, north, southeast. Okay. So southwest. This is one. This is a big one, man. This is a big beefy place. Just go yeah. west. I just want to see what's west. There's a river. My I'm God, I might map. actually have to make a map for this. Um. I'm, there's been no mapping. I know. The path so ends. The path ends okay, go for it. Approach the shore of the river, the river from east to west, and then immediately turns southward and out of view. You can hear the crash of white water in the distance, although it's fairly calm beside the shore. <coughs> Don't die. It's the coffee and booze. It's the coffee and booze. A handmade wooden raft is pulled up on the shore. Okay, do you want to take the raft? Sure. Uh, ride raft. Coffee plus blues equals coos. Or boffy. Um, get in boat. Or get in raft. Get on raft. Push raft. Launch it. There we go. Thank you, Gabe. Launch raft. Are you going to read this, Nick? Uh, yes. With a strong shove, you push the raft off into the uh, strong current of the river. The raft starts to take on water. A moment later, the raft is sunk below the surface of the water. You drag it back to the shore and dry yourself off. Okay. So then go south. South. Kit Garden. Ooh, okay, right. hello. And there's a rope. Ladder. Yeah. So row upon row of potted plants are arranged here in the moderate shade of the tree above. Many varieties of flora are being grown. One plant with long palm shaped leaves gives off a pleasing aroma. A metal pail catches your eye. A ceramic kiln has been constructed beside the garden and is radiating in extreme heat. A handmade shovel is on the ground behind you. A huge tree towers directly above you and a rope ladder hangs down from a tree house built in the tree's lower branches. You see a table here. Look at the table. Okay. There's like a lot of information. There's a lot. Um, a metal uh, pail is probably the big one. But uh, no, no, not go up yet. Why, why would you leave this room? <laughs> look at look at the table. Uh, oh, the pail too. That too. Get it? Can you get the get it? Get pail. Okay. 
You take the middle pail from Becker's tidy garden and dump the plant in it onto the ground. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, look at the table. One table looks extremely fragile. There's nothing on the table. And look at the kiln. The kiln is of ceramic construction and doesn't look all that sturdy. It's been built over a natural vent from the planet's interior. You can feel intense heat radiating from the top of it. There was a handmade shovel on the ground behind you. Get the shovel. That's the big one. Shovel. Up. Okay. Oh, jeez. So the ladder into the well-constructed treehouse. The interior of the makeshift fortress is extremely tidy and spartan. One desk with a single drawer occupies one wall, and huge window windows provide a bird's eye view of the desert valley. You see an axe and a wooden desk here. On the wooden desk, you see a field notebook. Right There's a oh it. boy. The field notebook is roughly bound from several different kinds of paper sewn together at the seam. Field notebook has been scribbled on the cover. Open notebook. Read it. Read. Read notebook. the notebook. <gasps> yeah, you got it. Okay, you open the field notebook and read the first entry. Date, February 21st, 2088. Subject, S. Cantaloupe Humunga. I observed a four-legged animal that strongly resembled a horse grazing in a grassy area on top of the mountain plateau. It saw me and ran away, but was back in a few hours. I found a good place to hide and observe him. I named him S. Cantaloupe Humunga. Because they canter like horses and are really big. Okay. Ooh, you want to read this one? Sure. I've been sighting these things on the plateau since I landed. They range from about 10 to 20 centimeters in length and are about 7 centimeters wide. There are thousands of them. They are invertebrates of some kind, but have many of the traits of amphibians. Their bite is poisonous and hurts like hell. I've been bitten a few times, and the wounds take weeks to heal, which is why I've named them Philo uh, Philangomorph Mandibilia. Their pincers are about ten times larger than their abdomen. They are nearly impossible to catch, making them difficult to study. That's weird, because, like, Langomorph means rabbit. Yeah. Langomorphies. Langomorph. One second. Yeah, Langomorpha is the uh, order. Is it the family? One second. Hmm. It's the order for rabbits. Okay, I don't know. Um, read it again. I'll read the next one. The next several pages contain a comparative analysis of the migratory behavior of Gyranthemus swuba. You stop flipping pages at an interesting entry on page 18. July 9th, 2088. Subject S. Gyranthemus swuba. Since my arrival, I've had to deal with a huge variety of bird that is quite prevalent. They strongly resemble pterodactyl species from Earth textbooks I read as a child. The indigenous species here are much smaller, though, and extremely intelligent. Uh, quite by accident. Something quite by accident that various high-pitched tones elicit specific and often strange reactions in them, perhaps relating to migratory or mating behaviors. After an experiment with a few handmade whistles, I was able to make one that caused them to sleep. Another that caused them to attack, and yet another that seems to pacify them. A few months after I arrived, one aggressive one of these birds made a nest beside the wreckage of my ship, and wouldn't let me get near it. I eventually was able to find the correct frequency on a whistle to drive it away. Another one built a nest in the pinnacles outside my house, and yet another whistle was required to appease it. The whistles don't seem to have the same effect on each animal. Very strange indeed. Anyway, I think the one outside my house likes me been there for a long time and has periodically protected me from cantaloupes that have wandered into the cliffs. It swoops down from its perch and bars the way across my rope bridge, but it just lets me pass right on by. I've sighted 24 different subspecies of S. Jarth gy swoop in the vicinity of my home. Some are aggressive, but some of them make themselves scarce when they see me coming. 
That's the one we needed to hear. Whistle. Get the axe. There's a drawer in that desk, too. Yeah. Some actuator calipers and an actuator discharger. What does that mean? Fine, take the axe, Lizzie Borden. Um, okay, can you look at the calipers and the discharger? Like, what does that mean? Actuator calipers. Tweezers for the safe removal of field actuator cores. And we'll look at the discharger. The actuator discharger is a small metal box with two clips connected on it. To it, one clip is gray and the other is blue. So this is good, Nick. One of the things that I very much enjoy also is that like actuator calipers. You're like, what the hell is that? And then you look at it and it explains its function to you because it's like, oh, you you as the character would know what this is. Have a good night, Sakura, and I hope you feel better. I hope you feel better. Get night, some rest. Sakura, I feel better. Um. All right. So go north. Yeah, I should be mapping this. Oh, that's the river shore. Okay, go south again. So, hold on. I'm going to get a fresh piece of paper. Alright. So, hold on. Garden. North is... North Shore. Raft. Okay. Um, go northeast. I hope you feel better and that your enemies feel worse. Indeed. I agree with Cannoli. So, Cliff Trailhead. Hold on. If you go west, does it take us to the to the shore? Yeah. Okay, good. Pinnacles. Is that a holdover from Zork? No, that's just my brain. I'm just, I, yeah, I'm just making sure everything connects properly. Um, okay, go east. And then go south. The meadows. That's right. So the shiny thing is on the other side of this, right? So, um, then go... Uh, southwest. River Trailhead. It looks like, yeah, everything is connected properly. Um, hold on. So, hold on. We, yeah, we haven't, we haven't, we didn't read any of this. We've never been here before. Um, oh. okay, look at the rocks. River Trailhead. You've reached a junction of several trails beside the chasm to the west. The chasm is not quite as deep as it appeared from the mountain plateau that you landed on. Looking back to the east, the trail makes its way back to the mountain trailhead. To the north and northeast lie the desert valley. A small trail leads up into the southwest, disappearing behind the rock formation. So let's go um, northwest. I know the southwest, they said that. But oh, look at the rock pile. Look at the rock pile first. Look at the rock pile. Duh. Rocks, sorry. Southwest? Okay, so it wants to go south. Let's go southwest. Let's see what's southwest. River so overlook. this hike was much more difficult than it was origi uh, than it originally looked. Sweaty and aching, you struggled to the cliff top overlook. The view from the river overlook is a panoramic view of the river chasm running from north to south, slightly to the west of the overlook. From here, it is clear that the river turns eastward toward the mountain plateau as it passes beneath you and toward the south. The ground is composed entirely of solid rock. You see a strange bush here. Let's look at that bush. Yeah, bush. The bush reminds you of a creasy... Creosote. Creosote? Creosote. I'm, I'm a funny fly sweater shape leaves. Yeah, okay, so um You can't you can't do that. One we're not allowed to disturb the flora and the fauna. Oh my gosh. Uh look down. Or look into the ravine. Look at ravine. 
Okay, that's not it. Um, look at Chasm. It's Deep Chasm. <laughs> I think we need to tie the rope along the branch. Just... Well, let's continue our exploration first. We need to gather up all our tools first, Dick. Remember? Remember this? we got to scout our area out. How's it going, by the way, Isaac? Isaac says, if I've learned anything, looking too closely at strange bushes is generally a bad idea. Um, it's true. Northeast, Nick. Back to the river. So I'm curious on why this is so important. Um, so go northwest now for me, please. How are you doing today, Isaac? I hope you're doing well, my friend. Um... Selecting the northwestward trail from here, you slowly ascend the trail via long switchbacks, winding slowly up the mountain. You eventually reach a plateau where several trails meet. After some thought, you proceed northwestward for a while, realize you're headed away from the river, and return to the crossroads. Okay. So I think the cairns just point in the direction of the river. No, um, maybe. Or Let's go south, please. Okay. That just heads right back. Okay. Hmm. All right, uh, southeast. I just want to know where everything leads me. Okay, so yeah. Um, all right, then go east. Uh, IW42 says, I'm not too bad. Just got done integrating old and new tech. My Tesla now has a ham radio. Oh, you finally got that accomplished. GG, man. All right, so mountain trailhead. This is where we met what's his nuts. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, go, uh, so, if we go northwest, I want to see where that takes us. It takes us to the garden, okay, it goes where it's supposed to. Good, we're mapping things correctly. All right, so, go east. What was that? Go east, it'll take us to the meadow. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we go north. Okay, we got a bunch we haven't seen here yet. Um, can you go north? Okay, northwest. I'm just double checking. Okay, east. And southeast. Okay, good, good, good. So these are the only places. It's actually not as big as it seems. Um, all right, so go south to the meadow. I think you're, you might be right, Nick, or something. Let's see. Um, tire your rope to tree. Yep, it's to go maybe down it. Um, it arcs gracefully through the air and over the limb, coming to rest nearby. Picking up the dangling end, you tie a, a strong double half hitch knot and pull it tight against the limb. Okay, so now we can go east. Taking a running jump, you swing on the rope out across the deep chasm. Although you don't swing out far enough to land on the opposite side of the chasm, you do manage to grab the small glass object before you swing back. After returning to the ground, you recognize it to be a small Kichi focal lens. Okay, let's look at look at the lens. It's in your possession. Okay, it doesn't feel so much anything. All right, Maybe we don't we have to find it at the pterodactyl. Uh, the whistle's what we need, right? Yeah, but I haven't seen a whistle. So let's go back to. So let's go. Um, sorry. Uh, we're in the meadow, so go uh south for me, and then go southeast. Was there something that liked shiny things? Not that I know of. Alright, so we're at halfway point. In his... I, I, I can't remember if there's something that liked shiny stuff. Now let's... let's yeah, nothing that we saw, I don't think. Nothing here. Uh, can you go southeast for me? Grass site. Here we go. Okay. So confused by the many turns, climbs, and descents of the mountain trail, you arrive to the mountaintop crash site. The remains of Becker's ship fill the flat area of this on this lower mountain plateau. Various pieces of Hichi junk and disassembled equipment litter the plateau. An apparently abandoned nest occupies a rock formation on the opposite side of the plateau. A large cactus is here, and a path climbs... Um, away to the northeast, you see a Venturi, a fuse cover, a beta store, a terrain sensor, a Doppler antenna, a maintenance crib, an actuator chassis, and a cactus here. On the maintenance crib, you see some 
thyristor clips. Thyristor. The actuator chassis has an actuator panel. The actuator panel has some grommets. On the cactus, you see a wooden whistle. Get that whistle, boy. Do we want to mess around with the actuator? Stuff yes. Here? Yes. Um. So we have actuator. Don't we have actuator-related things? The discharger and the calipers? Yeah. Okay. So, um, open actuator panel. So. Oh, the grommets. What's a grommet? Hey. Hi, Gwendolyn. Is mom open better? Uh, the opposite of a Wallace. Get up to bed, kiddo. Okay. Oh. Bond of love you. cheese. Aww, it's like a washer. Nice. Ring. What's a grommet, Nick? It's like a, a washer, also oh, like okay. a dog. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good dog. Jeez, too. grommet. Hey, I love you. Go see mama. Okay. Love you. Good night. You want me to help you? Okay, I'm gonna go help her. I'll be right back, Nick. You entertain people. You do things. Oh, I'm bad at that. <laughs> With... Okay. Remove grommets. With calipers. So we have a bend a nest. Oh, I should probably. Thank you for the follow, Roger Twill. Nick, you're you're on autopilot. Go for this. I gotta go get my youngest back to sleep. So you entertain people and play the game. I, I will attempt to. Uh, so we're gonna look. At better store, so look doesn't work. Look at better store. So better store is firmly embedded in the soil beside the crash site. And it's about a centimeter in length, tarnished and weathered, almost beyond recognition. Uh, take better store. So as you tug at the better store to dislodge it from the ground, a distant recollection reminds you that spent better store is leaky deadly acidic vapors unless disposed of properly as if receiving an electric shock from this memory you recoil from the bedister so we do not want that apparently hello roger twee uh i this is yes uh, oh of course uh john is watching from a distance great awesome hi john you want to watch me flounder and struggle uh I swear, sometimes he brings me on here just to see me squirm. Yeah, sure, John. Uh-huh. Yeah, just being a good dad, I don't... Whatever. Uh, okay. So, we see a Venturi. Have we attempted the Venturi? So, uh, take or get Venturi... Okay, so that's welded. Look at fuse cover. Open fuse cover. Cool. Excellent. There's no need to squirm. Is there a snack? No, that's just some twisted metal, I think. I wish there were a snack. Um, an actuator chassis and a cactus. Look at maintenance crib. Uh, did I misspell maintenance? I didn't. Look at crib. The maintenance crib is an oblong compartment attached to a large piece of the wreckage. Four rusted thrister clips are welded to the crib's cover. The crib is currently closed. Open crib. You open the maintenance crib and discover a flange diffuser and a grommet wrench. 
So we're going to take both of those. Take Diffuser and Wrench. Excellent. Uh, so then we're going to look at Actuator thing. I'm just going to look in general. Uh, so we're going to look. We're going to look. Uh, we're going to look at Chassis. Okay. Uh, use um, Gromit Wrench. On, not use. So open panel with Gromit Wrench. Okay, fine, John. I'll save. Bogus is a coward. Yeah, coward. Okay. So we're going to open chassis, uh, open panel with grommet wrench. You spend a while getting used to operating the grommet wrench and eventually succeed in removing all four grommets from the actuator panel. You bend the panel on its hinges, revealing an actuator cylinder. Look at... No, uh, don't, don't support Bogus's cowardice. No. This isn't how we live life. We're not able to save and then come back. No. We live this one life. We live and die by our actions. No. I refuse to acknowledge this. So look at cylinder. The actuator cylinder is a foot long depression in the actuator chassis. A small round cap is securely fastened to the cylinder. Uh, look at cap. Uh, open cap. Okay. Shoot cap. Hi, Nick. I'm back. Hello, everyone. So sorry for the delay there. Sorry. Being a dad comes first. Oh, whoa, that's the thing. That was my phone there. So it was in the stream. <sighs> such a pleasure to have you so much. It means the world to me. I'm glad you're able to come in, uh, Roger Tweet. It's such a pleasure to have you. Um, I'm, are you a fan of Text Adventures? What have you played? What do you like? If you have played them, of course. Um, I'd love to talk shop because I love me some Text Adventures. All right, so... With minor, okay. okay, so we're unscrewing the cap from the actuator into revealing a field actuator. Okay, so we got to use the calipers, and we got to put them into the discharger, right? Uh, I don't know. Or use the discharger on it first before using the calipers. Uh, let's look at the field actuator. Yeah, let's do that first. The field actuator is a rectangular platform containing a actuator canister. The canister is covered by a black metal flange connector mounted to a housing that is welded to the actuator plant. I don't like this puzzle. This is complicated. This is a write things down. I mean that it's complicated. It's sort of like you just like get the thing, then you use the, you get the key and then you use the key to open the lock and the key is literally right there. Yeah. Like all the stuff so far we're using on one end of the actuator is a red plug with two small anodes. Okay, okay, and so we, and so we gotta yeah. we gotta plug uh, put the plug discharge into red plug because it's blue, yeah, I think. Plug discharge. What was it called? The discharge. Discharger. Actual. Just put discharger. Charger. In red plug. Okay, um, you can't plug this. Okay, so plug discharger into. Actuator? Okay, no. Okay. Um, what's the thyristor clips again? Like we have. Whoa, there's so much here. You you did these steps, and now I do, I don't know 
where we are in this things. So what did you were there? I wasn't really. I was not paying attention. I was. I was getting my youngest to sleep. Um. Okay. There's a whole lot of stuff. Okay, so the actual plug has a pyramid anode and a tetrahedron anode. Mm -hmm. What are anodes? What is what is all of these words? So an anode is the opposite of a cathode. Okay. Telesia, how are you, my friend? Is the positively charged electrode where the cathode is the negatively charged? Uh, no. Wait, the positive is a cathode? What? Okay. One second. So an anode is an electrode of a polarized electrical device through which conventional current enters the device. This okay. contrasts with a cathode, which is an electrode of the device through which conventional current leaves the device. Okay. So. Anode is anode is, anode is intake, cathode is outtake. Okay. Yes. Okay. Look at our. Okay. So look at our district. Now Josh Graham's Graham says to check our tools. To look at our tools again, and that gives us helpful descriptions. Yeah. So we have some. We have a tiller. We have a flange diffuser. Okay. Did you use the flange? Something with the flange. One second. Look. Yeah. Okay. So you see some grommets, a fuse cover, uh, a Doppler antenna. On the maintenance crib, you see some thruster clips. In the actuator chassis, you can see an actuator cylinder. The actuator chassis has an actuator panel. In the actuator cylinder, you see a field actuator. On the field actuator, you see a flange housing. And okay, so use flange. What was it? Flange something? Um, hold on. So flange connector. What's our look at our inventory again? I can tell you. Flange diffuser. Okay, so use flange diffuser on flange. Um oh sorry. Um look at our flange diffuser then. This is, this is, whew. The flange diffuser is used for effective removal of flange connectors from field actuator cases. Um, remove. Hold on. No, no, it's flange connector. Right? Yeah. experiment with the flange diffuser for a long while and eventually figure out how to use it to diffuse the flange connector from its housing you toss the connector onto the ground removing the connector reveals a green cube shaped actuator core within the canister and we need so, to use diffuse it. diffuse it with so look at the actuator core the game has been very descriptive when we look at it like it's been helpful actuator core is a green pentagonal Cube, uh, two, a few centimeters in length. It is recessed inside the actuator canister. Okay, and look at um, the diffuser again. Oh, that's the flange diffuser. Sorry, it's um. I oh, hold on. Um, okay, so. Flange diffuser, grommet wrench, focal lens, a tiller, an axe, actuator calipers, actuator discharger. Yeah, look at the discharger. The actuator discharger is a small metal box with two clips connected to it. One clip is gray and the other is blue. Okay. So I don't think we need to use Save that. first. Save. Let's save here. And then we can use the calipers to get the core and see what that does. Focus is a coward You can still. continue me being a coward, yeah. Absolutely. I'll, I'll take that for the team. How are you doing today, by the way, Tillisia? It's good to see you. It's been a long time. I hope you're doing well. You get to watch us do really... This is a really complicated and somewhat dull puzzle <laughs> compared to everything else we've done. Because there's also not a lot of visualization to this either, which makes it really tough. Well, I don't, I don't like it because I feel like it's mostly just find the word that matches the other word. Yeah, and there's a lot we of words. Need the diffuser to diffuse the thing that has fuse in its name or something like that. Try doing nail stamping today. What is nail stamping? Like, like, 
like painting nails with stamps or or uh, I don't I actually have no idea what nail stamping would be Nick what would nail stamping be what do you think nail stamping is Nick go um, stamping a metal nail what does that mean I'm not looking it up oh my god uh, that makes sense what I mean it's your nail it's a human nail yes Take a little thingy and apply paint to it and press the stamp to it and then stamp on your pinky. Oh, okay. See, I was I was right then. My assumption was right. That's good. All right. So, all right, Nick, did you save? You saved? Okay. So we need to... Uh, Jesus, you really are a coward, sir. Yeah, we are. Um, okay, do more. So... Uh, Get actuator calendar. Take... Take... Can't core with calipers. What core? The actuator core. It's Ooh. weird and not as easy as it looks, but results are better than I could do by hand. Oh, see, that's what fantastic then. See? <gasps> okay, so now we use the diffuser. No, I uh, uh, put, I think we put, use the shutter and core. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, put, oh no, you know what we have to do, Nick? We have to discharge it before we take it. So the actuator core is a green pentagonal tube, a few centimeters in length that has been removed from the edge. Yeah. There's another thing we have to look at that had the, the, put core in canister oh no it's gonna blow up no matter what this is why we saved this is why we saved can we blow up just wait let it let it explode the booming tone of the field actuator continues to rise until it passes out of your range of hearing your muscle reflexes as painful as the painful noise subsides. Oh, man. Wait. A blinding light and a wall of superheated air flatten you. In a brief instant, you and your environs are reduced to smoldering ash. So, yeah, let's restore. We can do an undo in that, actually. It had an undo. That's fine. All right. Um. So, okay. We have a lot to look at here. Um. Keep moving. The the more is what's important here. Um. Okay. So, so open the panel. Yes. Uh, actuator the chassis has. You see a field actuator. On the field actuator, you see a flange housing. We open. The an actuator plug, plug and an actuator we'll cancel. The plug. Look at plug. The small red actuator plug has two anodes extending from it. One has a symbol on it resembling a pyramid. The other and it has a tetrahedron. Now let's take a look at our look inventory at again. Discharger. So the discharger is a small metal box with two clips attached to it. Look at oh gray clip. Okay. okay, so clip the gray clip on. Let's just try it. put gray clip. Clip gray clip on pyramid. No. Um. As the gray clip and pyramid anode make contact, a spark flies, and a low rumbling sound comes from. Oh, it's okay, so it's the other one. <laughs> undo, yeah. Is there an undo? Uh, yeah, let's see. Did that actually work? Whoa. Um, okay, so look at the uh, the actuator plug again. The tetrahedron! Cool. Okay. And then put blue clip on pyramid. The trap trap trapezohedron. <laughs> Okay. We 
Okay. So now if we take it, it should be fine. I hope. How shapely. Tetrahedrons are one of the only five regular polyhedra. This is good to know. We're learning something new every day. Oh, use caliper, calipers. No, it's take take core with calipers. Dodecahedrons are where it's at. Dude, Telesia, that was one of my first big ones. I was a kid. I was like, a dodecahedron, baby! Okay. It's top pops up and reveal an actuator cell. Get the actuator cell. We don't know what it's for. Boom! Puzzle done. Puzzle done. Get out of Dodge Northwest. Get the fuck out of here. Northwest? I, yeah, Northwest. I have a box of 40 on, on them on my desk. Ooh. Never managed to sell my die charms I made. Oh. Okay. So, Northwest. Okay, so now go south for me. Go south. Okay. That's fine. Um, Go west for me. Okay. Nothing. So go uh, northwest then. And we go north to the meadow and north once more to the cliff trail. Then we go northeast. Blow whistle. Do we have a whistle? Yes. Yeah. We have to hope that this doesn't make him horny. You would like that, though, Nick, is you. Go west, life is peaceful there. <laughs> oh, and putting the whistle to your mouth, you play a long, shrill note with a wooden whistle. The gyranthemus immediately takes to the air and lands in the nest high above you. So now go southeast. You make your way cautiously under the bridge. This way is dizzyingly. You yeah. slowly make the treasure's crossing. You want to read Becker's house? Sure. Becker's house is a cavernous room built inside the top of a rocky pinnacle. A large Hichi column extends from the ceiling to the floor with a disc-shaped self ex shelf extending from its at waist. <sighs> a large Hichi column extends from the ceiling to the floor with a disc-shaped shelf extending from it at waist level. It's hard to say. There's a small control panel on the shelf covered by a small handmade mattress on which a dinosaur is sprawled. On second glance, you decide that the animal looks a lot like a small version of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. A small housing underneath the panel is open, revealing a tray for a focal lens, a socket for a lens cover, and a slot for an actuator cell. Beggar is lounging on a large mattress lying nearby on the floor. Beside it is a personal log. A closed door is set into one wall, and a wooden stand occupies a corner beside a strange blue machine. Becker notices you coming in his front door and says, So you found it, did you? Come on in and have a look around. Um, okay. Uh, look at the dinosaur. Oh, look at that dino. I need more water. The Tyrannosaurus is a fierce-looking miniature Tyrannosaurus Rex with an imperceptibly small horn. It is standing on the small mat, perched precariously atop the shield control panel. Okay, look at the blue machine. The strange blue machine looks a little like a jukebox or a space heater from the Jetsons. It looks very heavy. Ask Becker about blue machine. I don't know what any of those blue metal thing is in there for. Okay. Um, ask. Oh, uh, what's the, well? Do do another look, or ask ask him about the dinosaur, because I want to know about the T Rex too. Does it hyphenate? Dinosaur, just dinosaur, just dinosaur, just dinosaur. Make it easy for yourself. I found that little feller back in '93, trapped on a cliff ledge. He was roaring his head off when I got there, but he befriended me once I'd rescued him. He's been hanging around ever since, and he really likes it there up on the panel. I made a little straw bed for him about a year ago, and he's calmed down quite a bit since then. It took me a while to figure out what he likes to eat, but there's this one kind of plant that it just gobbles up. It's the plant we found before. 
Yeah. Uh, if it smells it, I grow it in my garden. Oh no, never mind. And feed uh, a little every day, every few days. If he eats more often than that, he balloons up and has a hard time walking around at all. I've named the plant Juba Fruit after uh, Becker's voice trails off. Gee, I can't remember. I call him Mr. Poop. Oh. The name of his species is Gopheria. Pookie's a real swell pet. Aww. He doesn't eat much and only charges now and then. If he gets his dander up, the best thing to do is to get out of the way. He's a little feller, but that nose horn packs a wallop. I love Mr. Pookie. Aww. So we have to get some plants? Is that... Um, we'll look first. Let's look at what's going on here. We might not have to do anything. He's just talking to us. You know? Yeah. And take a look. Going to sleep on me already, Nick? It's only 10.30, baby. We got we got all night. It's been a long day. Um, so, let's see. Which a gopheria is sprawled. Okay, so, um, underneath the panel is open. We probably do... So, oh! Uh, uh-uh. Yeah, um... Okay. And then uh, put, uh, what is it, the lens. Do we have the cover? I think, at, hold on, so it says, hold on, look at, look at the thing. I think there actually is a cover already. And we just have to put the cover on it. Look for me. Um, a small housing underneath the panel is open, revealing a focal lens, a socket for a lens cover. Oh, okay, so we do need a lens cover. Which is, oh, I know what that is. That's the thing on the edge by our ship. By our okay. ship. Uh, I don't know how to get it, though. Okay. Look, uh, sorry, we're not already looking. Hold on. Um, Beggar's lounging on a large mattress laying nearby on the floor. Personal log, a closed door is set into one wall. Can we, oh, um, ask him about the door. I keep a lot of important things back there. There just isn't enough room in here for all my stuff. Look, the stuff back there is private, so please don't ask me to open it for you. Okay, um, so look at the blue machine. Again. Hmm. Okay, so that doesn't have much going for it. Um, okay. Uh, how about talk to Becker? What does he have to say? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, look at log. Read log. Sorry, read log. You turn, uh, you can read that. Oh, this is the one that he, we picked up earlier. An aggressive species of cactus occurs sparsely throughout the desert terrain of this planet. Standing over four meters tall, an adult S. Geraldo Cassius possesses limbs of unimaginable destructive power. Clearly is an evolved defense mechanism. These organisms are able to propel their massive limbs at will to, de to the detriment of the m casual observer. The slightest Please. pressure... On the surface of one of the spine-covered limbs causes the plant to swing its limbs wildly in the direction of the unwary victim. I was lucky enough to learn of these plants' behavior by watching one impale a helpless injured jackalope that happened to brush one of its arms. Needles from the arm of the S. Geraldo quickly skewered the animal, causing immediate death. Thank God these plants do not possess mobility or the desert terrain would be dominated by huge green barbed aggressors intent on making pincushions out of all the creatures they encountered. I know what we have to do with the, the uh, boat, Nick. I was thinking about this while I was reading this. Do you want to know why it sank? Why? We have all this shit on us. Oh. Although, sorry, um... Although fierce and deadly, the plants do not seem to possess any reasoning ability, and I've often amused myself by throwing things at them from a safe distance. The arms wave violently in all directions for a moment, and soon resume their seemingly harmless frozen pose. We have to throw something at that plant? I don't know if we necessarily need to, but we're going to see what's going on. So I'm going to try to go northwest. Now go southwest. Uh, 
Let me go west. Uh, Josh, we do not have the lens cover. And we're, that's what we're getting next. So I want you to save here and then drop all. Okay, um, so then uh, get on boat and launch boat. It didn't do it. Okay, so it's still sunk. Have a wonderful night, Earl. It is an awesome pleasure. I sincerely hope that you find more seeds. Fingers crossed. Thank um, you, Earl. Hold on. Uh, we have a cylinder cap. Does that count as a lens cap? Mm. I don't know. Um, so let's go east. There is something else that he has a log. We didn't get to read. So go uh, northeast from here. And then go southeast. I don't know the exact words. Okay, so... Hit more. Read personal log. Oh, get personal log? Becca's apparent dormant period comes to an abrupt end as you reach down to pick up the personal log. Don't be trying to read my personal journal, boy. He looks very serious, quietly and deliberately. He continues, everything in that book is personal, very personal, okay? Can we ask him about the raft then? Ask him about the raft. I envy Tony Hawk's paradoxical fame. While insanely famous, nobody ever recognizes him. Oh, I love me some Tony Hawk, dude. Oh, there we go. Here we go. I bought that raft last year out of fallen timber and rope. To make a long story short, it didn't work. I thought I'd be able to figure out how to build boats, but I couldn't. I was hoping to use it to recover my cane, which I accidentally dropped over into the chasm several years back. I built the raft to try recovering a really great cane I made from one of my ship struts. As I get older, it's getting difficult to climb without it. Would you be willing to help me try and get it back? Yes. It's not going to be easy, and it might not even work at all. But without your help, I'd never get it. Are you really going to help me? Yes. Great. I'm ready to begin when you are. The first thing we've got to do is find my raft and... Oh, we have the tiller. Yeah, we have the tiller, and we have the pail, too, to bail water. Yep. Okay, perfect. Then we asking him was the right move. Okay. Wolf Becker, the master carpenter, stares off into space, deep in his own thoughts. Um, okay, so give uh, uh, give Tiller to Becker. Just do it one at a time. I want to. I'm gonna be. See. Thanks, Becker replies, taking the tiller. I'll need this to steer the old raft of mine. And then right before Codger stares at his navel and examines a hole in the shirt. And then, uh, what was it? A canister? What was it? It wasn't a canister. It was a <laughs> tin. But, well, uh, look at our inventory. Sorry, I don't remember what it's I called. Did. Oh, I did. Um, shovel, metal pail. Give pail to Becker. That pail should do just fine for Balin. Hang on to it. You're going to need it while I'm steering. And what else did he need? That was it. That was it? Okay, so uh, out. Yep, he's... Okay, he's with us, yeah. Um, Southwest. Goodbye, Audio Eric. Have a wonderful night, Audio Eric. Thank you. Yes, this is going to be the conclusion. We're beating this game tonight for sure. I don't care, Nick, how tired you are. <laughs> I'm going to make you I'm gonna make you suffer for my, my own pleasure of finally finishing this game. West. This one is taking a long time, and I've really... I've never, I've never been at a point where I was like, this is taking too long. All right. Uh, launch raft. With a strong shove, you push the raft onto the strong current of the river. The raft starts to take on water, just as Becker told you it would. A moment later, Hold on. The raft 
he needed more. Um, he needed more. What did he need? Ready to rock and roll, sailor. By the way, have I already asked if you can swim? All right. Um. Okay. Uh, get on the boat. Becker. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Th thank you, Nick, for your wonderful words. Um, sure, we're ready to go. He steps gingerly on the raft. This is sure going to be huge of fun, sailor. All right, launch raft now. There we go. There we go, Nick. You know what to do. All right. Uh, the rapidly turning water all around you is a little alarming, but Becker seems to know what he's doing. Becker adeptly steers the raft around the first bend and into the rapids. The raft has already taken on a lot of water. Steady as she goes, shouts Becker over the din. Bail water with pail. B-A-I-L. Yep. You bail like crazy and manage to keep the rickety raft afloat. Bail, sailor! Becker shrieks at you. He really seems to be enjoying this. The river proceeds due south beneath canyon walls that continue to rise. You see a gyranthemus circling above you, just below the canyon rim. Getting your bearings, you recognize the features of the river trail head ahead. Bail water? You bail like crazy and manage to keep the rickety craft afloat. Get the slow turn eastward, and you leave the white water behind. Becker whistles as a sailing song of some sort. The canyon walls are still getting steeper. Again. Uh, he really seems to be enjoying this. The river proceeds in a straight line in front of you, heading due east. You must be approaching the shore where you saw the metal strut. And again. Here it is. The river gets shallow here, and the raft soon runs aground. Picking it up, you and Becker carry it north until the water deepens again. Along the way, Becker leans down and picks up his cane and smiles at you. We're quite a team. Yes, indeed. Quite a team. To put the raft back in the water and get in position and resume your journey. Immediately ran to white water. And Becker yells out, Bail, Hanson! Bail, baby! Bail, Taylor! Uh, Becker uh, carefully compensates with his tiller. You've completely lost your bearings now and wonder if you'll ever make it back. Pretty good raft. I really need to work on making it watertight. I, uh, though, Becker whistles another tune. He's just having the time of his life right now. You bail like crazy and manage to keep the rickety craft afloat. You and Becker both spot the waterfall coming ahead. You look at him, he looks at you. Just in time, you both dive from the craft and climb up safely on the level ground. Becker looks with interest at his raft and Tiller are thrown over the waterfall and destroyed in the white water beneath the fall. Now that's what I call a decent field trip, says Becker beaming. I got my cane back too. He holds out the cane and twirls it artfully. Been missing this sucker for quite a while. I'll make me another raft in no time. Then we'll do it again. I can't wait. Oh, what? I'll make another raft in no time. Then we'll do it again. I can't wait. Wasn't that fun, Ensign Baylor? He he he. He starts climbing off toward the northwest. Waterfall. Uh -huh. You're standing beside the dramatic waterfall that terminated your raft trip uh, with Admiral Becker. There isn't any developed trail here, and the only possible exit is a steep climb to the northwest. The river and waterfall prohibit movement in other directions. So northwest, then. Oh, back to the crash site. Okay. Um, you spend the returns, climbs, and descents of the mountain trail. You arrive at the mountaintop crash site. The remains of Becker's ship fill the flat area on this lower mountain plateau, blah, blah, blah. So do you think the cylinder cap acts as a lens cap, too? I mean, I guess it could. So go northwest. After all this madness, like the wall of text. He sprints off. Uh, right, and then uh, uh, northwest. Then north. Uh, 
and then north again. And then northeast. And then southeast. Hold on, let's see if he has anything to say. Um, they have more. He's lounging on a mattress lying nearby on the floor. Um, okay, so I. Uh, uh, So put cylinder cap on lens cover. Okay, look at the lens cover. Oh, what happened there? Did you not look at the lens cover? It's a socket for a lens cover. Oh, look at socket then. No. Uh, it wasn't lens cap. It was, it was cylinder cap. Okay. You must have missed something. Right. I think we gotta move this dyno. Ask Becker about lens cover. Why did we get him the cane? Because he wanted it. But how did that help us? Maybe he likes us now. I bet you it's for after we had made got this machine put up. But ask him about the lens cover. There are two things we haven't missed messed with. Maybe the cactus. There was a glint from our ship. The glint from our ship was the cane, actually. Um, from the mine. Ask him about the mine. That's the mine I explored in the mountains to the south. I managed to pull a fair bit of uh, vermiculite out of there. From the south, okay. Ask him about vermiculite. I mined a fair bit of vermiculite from a shaft in the mountains to the south. It turns out that vermiculite makes my garden pots about a hundred times stronger than they are without it. It took me forever to find some, and when I finally did, I used it up real fast. If you manage to find me some of that purple stuff, I'll give you the lens cover that I took from underneath that panel. Okay. So we gotta go in the mines. Out. <clears throat> we didn't see the mines. No. So it's south of what does he say? Uh, mountains to the south. Okay. So out. Southwest. Then south. South again. Um, go west. Okay, appear from the mountain plateau that you landed on. North and northeast is the desert valley. Um, okay, so that's not where we need to be. So go north, east. We gotta find out where this where this mine is, right? Yeah. Um, go west. Is the Cairn Church way to go? Uh, oh, so yeah, maybe let's let's go read. Look at that Cairn. Go go south and look at the Cairn. Sorry, it's a good idea, Josh. Nope. You gotta keep going south. Or oh, sorry, west. It's it's west. Sorry. Hold on. When you turn this way, close your presentation. Hold on. There was a rodent. Um, south. 
Okay, look at the cairn. Southwest. Yeah, we were here before. And we got... We got a point for being here. There's no cactus. That's just a creosote bush. It's not the same. What is well, so? Let's look at creosote. What was creosote? Why are you trying to throw things at them? Ooh. Creosote is distillation of tar from wood or coal, and is used as a wood preservative. Okay. So bush. Oh, here we go. It's a medicinal herb. By inhibiting the growth of nearby plants, it is what we need to use the, to how we get the goo. How do we get it? We need to put it in. No. Do we still have the pail? No. Oh, look at. Oh, we do. Take bush. Oh, we have a shovel. We have a shovel. We have a shovel, Nick. Yep. My shovel. Dig bush with shovel. Yeah, all the trails were twisting back around, Josh. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cam. The ground was solid rock here. You're right. Well, we have a gun. <laughs> the gun doesn't work. You can fire the gun at it. How about we get... Can we now go back to the water and fill up the pail and maybe water it? And that'll loosen up the ground? Maybe. Go, go northeast. Then, uh, north. Okay. Then southeast. No. Go southeast. One second. What are they called? Creosote. Yes, you know, he's, he says that just he has different plants. It's not. One plant with a long palm shape leaves gives off a pleasing aroma. Yeah, that's what uh, Josh was. Mr. Pookie, it's one of the plants, and I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah, so get uh, palm leaves. Palm, yeah. Yeah, the jubi. Oh, um, oh. look at the look at the jubi fruit. Get leaves, get jubi fruitus leaves. There we go. Okay, good, good, good. That that's good to know. Perfect. Um, so southeast. And then southeast again. And then southeast again. And then southeast again. Oh no. Uh did we did we I don't know if there's a soft lock in this game. Well, we had previously remember with the with the with the um with the Sasquatch. Remember? We soft locked that before. I guess. Okay. Well, hold on. <sighs> you want to save? Make a second save right now and try. 
Sorry, what? Um, oh, make a second save and then go to drop trial. I think that's before we did anything, because that's when we dropped everything. Oh, because you didn't save enough? Oh, shut up. You didn't suggest that either. You didn't share it. That's true. I did not. You're right. I did not, Nick. I'm sorry. All right. Um. So make a, make a save here, and then we'll go back to drop trial, and we'll try it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh man, that dude. This has been this has been a tough one. And the, it's just got a lot in it for some weird reason. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. I mean, it's like the last one though. That's why, you know. Yeah. All right, so we have to go uh, east. Um, northeast, and then southeast. Okay, so what are we gonna do? I'm just trying to get my brain put together here. Oh, he's up now. Oh, sorry, that was your thing. That's right. Um. Okay, so now we go out. <clears throat> Give pale to Becker. Is what you need. But he's like, no, oh, you'll need that. Um. Okay. Okay. And so is that southwest? And then west. And then uh, yep, yep. You gotta tell Becker to get on raft. Get on raft and launch raft. Don't save over the sad save, yeah. Oh, look at you making save games that make sense. Launch. <clears throat> okay, time to bail. Let's see. Yep, just keep bailing. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, okay. Put water in pail. Probably, but get water in bucket. It's fine, too. I have to take the river first. Fill pail with water. Okay, so no. That's not what we need to do, then. So let's restore them to sad safe. Let's go to Becker's place. Becker's stuff it has something there. It's got to have something there. We're missing it. So like we asked him about like the mines and stuff like that's a good start. We know the Creosote's so it's what we need, right? There's got to be more to it. So go northwest. I thought we were so close to being. Go on. Uh, oh. Oh, that was previously. That was about the plant. Um, Northwest. And then northwest again. And then north. And then north. And then northeast. And then southeast. Okay, so let's hold on this. Read this through again. I'm going to read it again real closely. Becker's house is a cavernous room built inside the top of a rocky pinnacle. A large heat sheet column extends from the ceiling to the floor with a disc-shaped self shelf extending from it at waist level. There's a small control panel on the shelf covered by a small handmade mattress on which a gopheria is sprawled. A small housing underneath the panel is open, revealing a focal lens, a socket for a lens, and... Oh, should we ask him for the socket? Didn't he say he would give us the socket for the... Yeah, for the creosote. Hold on. No, no, we need to give him the thing first. No, he has it. He wants the purple goo, and he'll give it to us. We have to oh. give him, the, yeah. Then what was he giving us in exchange for the cane? Nothing, just help. 
one second. I'm going to ask for the lens cap because this makes no sense. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Stop. 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 Literally nothing will happen if he gives it to us. Nothing. Okay. Hold on. Ask. Hold on. Back for lens cover. Don't. Okay. You can ask for it. It's fine. What would happen? He, I mean, happened? you can ask him. It's fine. I'm going to bring me from Immaculate. Yeah. Oh, then why can, the fuck did we get him a cane? I bet you he couldn't d help us Without until then. Or, or, or Nick. What if we get everything done here? And then he's like, hey, I'd love, can you take me with you? But he's like, I can't until I get my cane. And we just kind of uh, skip that skip. Look. Look for me one more time, please. Hit again. We already read this. I didn't see anything here. There's more. And I wanted to... So Becker's lounging on a large mattress lying nearby on the floor. Beside it is a personal log. A closed door is set into one wall. And a wooden stand occupies a corner beside a strange blue machine. We've looked at the machine. Let's look at the stand. The... Okay, so it's a wooden stand of some sort. Though there isn't much room on it to put things... So that's, that's what that's corner. that's what thing is in the back corner. So ask him about that. I use that in my musical pursuits. You aren't interested in music, are you? Ah, oh, music. I surely do miss it at times. Becker sits up straight on the mattress and smiles broadly. I made a few musical instruments since I came here, and I've been practicing quite a bit. Do you play? Say yes. You do? Wonderful. I've been looking forward to playing with other musicians. Do you want to play? Yes, we do. Great, says Becker exuberantly. You're a little more sleepy. Better find a nice place to sleep. Oh, that's what it's saying. Becker opens the wooden door and disappears for a minute. He soon emerges holding two wooden drums with tops made from animal hides. The animals I skinned to make these drums were long dead when I got to them. I figured I might as well put them to good use. Music soothes my souls, they say. He places one of the drums in front of you and sits down on the mattress and begins to tap out an interesting beat. Join in whenever you want, says Becker. Beat drum. Oh, uh, hit drum. Play drums? Play drums is what we need. Duh, play drums. You exercise your musical talents and join in the percussive fray. Becker and you continue banging away on his fine percussion instruments. Yeah. Becker and you continue. Do it again. Just keep going. We're jamming right now. Becker and you continue banging away on the, his fine percussion instruments. A parrot flies in through the front door of Rolf's house. It takes a position on the wooden stand. It immediately joins in, squawking approximately in time with Becker's pounding. Do it again. Keep going. Get the parrot. Oh, here we go. Becker drums his way into a dramatic flourish and concludes, you do an impressive solo finale as well. The pair takes flight, leaving Becker's house from the door he had entered. It's a lot of fun. You aren't half bad either. Um, ask him about the parrot. Oh, um, do we have the drum now? Let's see, you're holding an actuator core. We do not. So you wanna, um. You wanna deal with this? Play drums. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mahitas is well, good, right? Okay, hold on. Just a minute, I'll get a refill, Mahito. How are you, by the way? Roger Tree says, I wouldn't let someone look at my personal log. I agree, Roger Tree. No, um, leaves. To Dino. As the Gopheria spots the Jubifrutus leaves, it begins panting and screeching vigorously. The Gopheria leaps into the air and snatches the pungent leaves from your hand. Now on the floor of Becker's house, the creature begins rapidly consuming them. You're even more sleepy. You better find a nice place sleep. to sleep. Just Sometime. sleep down. But he's off the thing. He's off what thing? The mat? Yeah. Oh, get mat? 
Oh. Oh, no, but it's not powered right now, Nick. That's the thing. We had to repair the machine. Yeah. So this is the end-to-end -end game. Yeah. The last thing we need to do. Oh, he left, though. He left. Okay, so he left. He's mad at us. Um, okay. Yeah, the housing underneath the control panel is open, revealing a focal lens. It's like, okay, the Gofairy, having polished off the pungent leaves, eyes the control panel and the mattress in her hands. It shrieks alarmingly and rushes out the front door. Can we sleep? Uh, let's sleep, because we're going to fall asleep. I'm going to sleep somewhere safely. Yep, if you have any dreams, you don't remember them. All right, cool. Uh, so, hold on. So, drum again. I think the drums are important. Play drum. Okay, uh... Ask Becker about stand. Yeah. Yeah, do you guess? <laughs> oh, ask Becker is it? Yeah, you hit E. E, yes. I saw that. Yes. Yes, I want to play. Okay, now play drum. Okay. Okay, hold on. Well, but, 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 yeah, get parrot, yeah. Be cool with that, Rue boy, Becker Warren Specker, and you continue banging away. Oh, you're trying to get the parent again. I know. Um, what's the point of the parrot? Uh, um. Okay. So let's 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 do the thing then. Let's do the thing we're supposed to do, right? The mountain thing. No, this thing here. This this the the panel. I'm gonna see what happens if we try to activate it. What happens? You're not going to get that stuff working without replacing the stuff I took from under the panel. How do we get the creosote? It's got to be something with the bird, right? Can well, we, we take the... We have to get the vermiculite. Yeah, but the creosote thingy is the vermiculite. It's, that's what it is. It's because... It? Yes, because I'll tell you what creosote does. I'll, look, I'll tell you what creosote does. Hold on. Okay, one second. Creosote is... Creosote bush um it's a medicinal herb and due to its ability to secure more water by inhabiting the growth of nearby plants it is more commonly called i don't oh maybe it's not i don't know hmm ask becker where the mines are Ask Becker about mines. Let's see if we get more of his mine. Josh says, "Wait, does that mean that the cover's in the kiln?" Maybe. We you never looked at the kiln. I mean, we looked at the kiln, but we didn't look at okay. the kiln. Yeah, Trigger Northwest, maybe. What's the parrot gotta do? We got points for doing the parrot. What does the parrot gotta do? I don't know. I don't know either. You tell me. Uh -huh. Yeah, he said he'd give it to us, but maybe the kiln has something for the parrot. Maybe? The kiln may have I something, know. right? Uh, uh, southwest. And then southwest again. That should take us to the thing. Can you open the kiln? Yeah, open the kiln. There's also a table. Somewhere. Yeah, but there's nothing on the table, though. Maybe Open, kill him with the shovel. Pain. No, the shovel. Oh, 
Okay, no. Oh, I'm stumped. I'm stumped. Um, I'm going to get some more water. Okay. I got to go. Uh, my oldest, my wife is texting me saying my oldest is still awake downstairs for some reason. So I'm going to be right back, Nick. Um, explore. Just try to figure things out. I believe in you. I'll be right back. I, I was depending on you for directions because I wasn't paying attention to where anything was. Uh, okay, so let's try north. What does north do? That gets us to the river shore. Um, use hail to get water. No. Fill pail with water. Plenty of opportunities to fill the pail later. Why later? East, northeast. Okay. So northeast brings me there. I am back. All right. Uh, so, oh, okay. That kiln is made out of mud I dug up from the riverbed several miles from here. I built it on a hot spot, a vent that spews hot air, kind of like you, pal. I use it to fire the pots I grow all these plants in. Only problem is, I haven't had the strength lately to mine the one natural mineral around these parts that makes those pots last more than a few months. Remaculate. As a result, I've been spending the majority of my time lately making pots that don't last very long. Okay, so go, um... Uh, my only guess is maybe we aren't... We aren't... We, we haven't found a place. Okay, so go southwest. We had to, yeah, we had to have missed something. Hold on, so let's go west. The look for any cairns. Hold on. Um, this is all that's fairly calm beside the shore. Okay, so go south. Hold on, so let's see. A row upon row pot of plants are arranged here in a moderate shade of the tree. Right is a floral grown here. So I'm at kiln. Huge tree towers directly above you, and a rope ladder hangs down. Okay, so go south once more. Okay, so look at the cairn here. And go southwest. And that's the river overlook. There's not a cairn here, right? Oh, you dropped the calibers because you threw them. Um, all right, so go northeast. There's no cairn here. Then go east. There's a cairn. No, yeah. So we don't want to go west because that goes back. Okay. Um, 
mountain trail where it's steeply to the southeast up the side of the mountain. Yeah. So do we want to go? Go north. Southeast? Go north to the meadow. No, I, I, the, the damn mine is in the mountain, isn't it? Yeah. If, but hold on. Just, can you go north from here real quick? Oh. Well, princess is here. Okay, so look at the cairn here. And Southwest is going to take us to our ship. But if you notice, oh, if you notice in the picture, there's the mine. So go, go northeast. You can see the mine. Where? Uh, just to the right. Do you see there in the bottom right? There's like rocks yeah. and stuff. That's the mine. Um, so, so go northwest. Look at the cairn. There's a cairn here, right? Oh no, there's go north. Go north to the meadow. All right. Um Okay, so have we ever gone east? Yeah, east is the rope. Okay. So have we gone southeast? Uh southwest. Yeah, that'll lead us to the to, to the trail. So maybe, oh, yeah. hold on. So maybe you're right. So maybe the crash ship with the ship and the cactus, or is that not what you're looking at? Oh, um. So yeah, go south once more, and go southeast. Maybe that is the crash site. Maybe you're right. That could be the crash site. You're right. And then that's the path that leads down to the waterfall. Southeast. Yeah. Um. Can you go west? Okay, no. And then south. No. Okay. Yeah, so south was... The mine is in the mountains, right? Yeah, so go south and see, see if we can see more from there. That's the vantage point. Um, and this, the shiny thing is gone now. And we can't go anywhere else from here. So we can go south, northeast, or west. West is back on our ship. So, yeah, northeast. Oh, what? It's not. I thought it was our ship. That's my bad, Nick. That is my bad. I failed you, my friend. I failed you. All right. Shit happens. Okay, climbing down a steep circular cliff trail, less and less sunlight reaches the depths to which you are descending. The trail suddenly comes to a dead end. Looking straight up, you get a sense for how the depths of the shaft, um, well, for the depth of the shaft you've descended. A shallow pit that could be the mine Becker mentioned to you has been carved out a few centimeters below the surface. You see a crew soap bush, a rusty pickaxe, and a pit here. So I uh, get pickaxe. Uh, dig with pickaxe? We've had a hatchet this whole time, John. What do you mean? Oh, to cut the plant? Yeah. I don't think he wants us to do that, though. He doesn't want us to harm anything. Oh, but it's to tell us that... I mean, no, dig with a shovel, maybe. Okay, uh, can we, oh, use shovel on bush. Dig up bush with shovel. Okay, look at the creosote bush here. There's got to be a reason why it's there. Okay, do you want to cut it with the axe? Okay, yeah. 
After all his years, Becker has only seen one of these bushes. Well, we've seen two. Do we want to tell him about the other bush? Yeah. Oh, what? Nick, 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 Nick. No, 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 no. Use the pickaxe at the other creosote site. That's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, because it's where yeah, it grows, yeah. where there's vermiculite. Yeah. Josh, Josh and I came to the same conclusion at the same time. So go up. Uh, then northeast. Then northwest. Then uh, west. And then southwest. That's what it is. Okay. Just dig, dig with pickaxe. There it is. You swing the pickaxe hard at the rocky surface. You barely scratch it, but you've made some progress. After a short while, you're so exhausted that you collapse from fatigue again. Oh, um. Just some more and get all sweaty and irritable. Again. You dig some more with the pickaxe, realizing how hard digging rock with the pickaxe actually is. Approaching total exhaustion, you discover a tiny vein of vermiculite. Get vermiculite, baby. Rock okay. isn't always hard. Northeast. It depends on the rock. There's, uh, at uh, the site, the, the archaeological site I work at, there was an instance where famously someone... Uh, thought they were still excavating dirt, but they were excavating the bedrock. Oh, um, really? And we had to document that they had put a cut there. Oh. The because yeah. it's uh, igneous tufo. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this very soft rock that... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it ends up being funny in publications because typically newer stuff is on top. That's sort of how yeah. archaeology works. Except for in this case, the most modern thing was on the bottom. Nerd. Yeah. Uh, northeast. And then northeast. And then north. And then northeast. And then southeast. No, we gotta go northeast first. And then southeast, sorry. I was going way too far ahead, I apologize. No, it's fine. I'm trying to keep my give vermaculite to bigger addled brain. Yes, you can do this, Nick. We're getting there. We're getting there so close. Yep. Yes, this, this is, is more than uh, enough to make hundreds of strong pots. I'm gonna have to check this vermaculite out and make sure it's real. But it'll only take me a few minutes. Meet me down by my garden in a while, and if it's real, I'll give you this thingy. I promise. Okay. Yeah. So northwest. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, get his journal. Get his journal. Get his yeah, personal log. Read personal log. <gasps> My ship was irrevocably damaged and landing on this desolate and forbidden world. <laughs> Excuse me. Food and water stores were lost. My leg is injured and it looks like it will heal. I'm able to scout the immediate area. Luckily, the water in the nearby river surrounding this plateau is potable. Food is going to be a bigger problem. Looks like I'm stranded. I should have quit when I was ahead. Again. There were animals rummaging outside the wreckage of my ship last night. I didn't see them, but there are animal tracks all over the ground. If they'd been more curious, they'd have found me. I'll try to find a safer place to sleep tonight. Leg is a little better, but I'm getting hungry. Again. Discovered a room atop a nearby cliff of apparent Heechi construction. There's all sorts of electronic equipment in there I don't recognize. I spent the night there last night. It's quite a strenuous climb to the room, and the condition of my leg, which is improving, makes it even more difficult to reach. I'm really hungry now, though I found a few roots which seem to be edible. We're gonna this check his better too. Yeah. All that personal. The roots weren't enough. 
I remember that most Hichi machines contain actuator cells that can be used as weapons and successfully removed from one from the Hichi panels. I used it to kill a horse-like creature I found grazing in a nearby valley. Man, that cell went off like a miniature cannon. As I was flaying the beast, I became so sick and disgusted that I buried the creature's carcass just west of the trailhead leading to my ship. I buried the actuator core with the beast so I wouldn't be tempted into using it again. Roots will have to do for now. Hold on. Just west of the trailhead. Oh, whoa! Just west of the trailhead. Okay. Sorry. There might be something more here. So, west of the trailhead. Uh. Okay. Just west. Alright. Um. So, let's see. Life here is actually getting quite bearable. Hold on. A dissertation on the diurnal patterns of various animals of the planet. Sorry, I found some other edible plants and gotten pretty good at collecting enough water to last several days at a time. My legs almost completely healed, so I'm only limping a little. The weather here is pretty predictable, although a bit of the hot side during the day. I haven't seen another of this horse-like creature since I murdered one many months ago. I, um, I miss Adriana a lot. I'm spending a lot of time looking for plants to eat. Most of the stands of edible vegetation have been picked clean by now, and I find myself going on longer and longer hikes to find enough food to eat. I'm going to have to start growing my own, so I have put a lot of energy into trying to make clay strong enough to make pots out of. There's a vent from the planet's interior west of the meadow that could be used. Hi, Ross. How's it going? My oldest is deciding to be awake right now. They could be used to fire pots if only I could come up with some good clay. Hey, Ross. What you doing? Get yourself a granola bar and get up to bed. I'm starting oh. no separate film. Thank you. Feel no source. For cataloging the many plants and animals I've come to know on this beautiful world, so all entries relating to my botanical and zoological research will be made in that book, and I'll reserve this log as my personal journal. All right. Success. I made a combination of minerals from which to make decent clay. I mix mud from the nearby Chasm's riverbed with a purple ore of mine from deep within the tall mountains south of the meadow. I built a strong pickaxe from various pieces of my ship that helps immeasurably with the mining. I covered the hot vent with rocks and have fired a few strong pots so far. Pretty soon I'll have a full-fledged garden. These activities are keeping me quite busy and I really enjoy the challenge of survival on this planet. See these. Next 13 pages are a treatise on the virtues of solitary life. Resume reading from page 198. October 17, 2088. Whenever I'm lonely and tired from toil, I go to bed early and dream dreams royale. Drop the personal log, save, and then go into his room. I don't want to like, have him come back and be pissed off at us. No, it's the field notebook. Drop personal log. Okay, uh, open door. I have to save, of course, yeah. Thank you. Open door, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we can't, no matter what. Alright, so out. Or northwest, or you know what I mean. Um, then uh, southwest. And then southwest again. Look at him. Uh, what took you so long, Snickers Becker? Anyways, here's the lens cover I promised you. Friend, he drops it in your open palm. I always keep my word. He starts back towards his house, but turns back to it. If I haven't told you already, leave my garden and powder stuff alone. Okay. Uh, northeast and the northeast. This was a big one. This was a beefy puzzle. Or a series of puzzles. Southeast. Um. Can we ask him about Adriana? You have it as upped. Alright, um, ask him about, ask, yeah, 
Becker about Adriana. A D R I A N A, yeah. <sighs> oh, Jesus. Oh, I did not anticipate that language. Wow. I'd sick a Geranthamus on her right now if she were here. He pauses the remote, reflecting on his outburst. No, I wouldn't. He whispers. Why? I don't remember. We had the magazine. You want to read the magazine? Read our read the magazine. Cause it had something, right? Maybe she didn't she leave him for somebody else? Let's see. Um <clears throat> Was in trouble within yeah. six months when uh, Adrian announced that she was bored with Rolf. Since Becker's disappearance, however, Adrian has gone through a profound change. I had a lot of growing up to do after Rolf left. I realized now that I had what I had in him. Oh! Show him the magazine! Show him the magazine! <clears throat> he doesn't know. Show magazine to Rolf. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Show magazine to Becker. Yes, you can borrow it. Yeah, interesting people. I never, I've never read that, but I'd like to. Could I borrow for a while, friend? Give, yeah. Thanks. I've been cast off from civilization for so long that I'd be very interested in any news from home. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, let's let's push the button. Um. I uh, pull lever. It's turn knob, pull lever, push button. It's an impressive text parser, even aside from the graphics with right lip, and they do a lot of attention to detail. This is really fantastic stuff. Yep, and now pull lever. Pull lever, not push. There we go, and then push button. I agree, Lip. This is fantastic. I, I, the thing is that when I played the spellcasting series, I loved it. It, I thought it was fantastic. And I love the parser. And this is still true here. We have read this already a million times. Nothing happens for a full minute, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And things rise up and do their thing. Did you listen to the soundtrack with the Roland um, MP32? I did. It slaps. It slaps. Dude. It's fantastic. Um, I help Becker. Be Do you want to come with us, Becker? Crash landed. Ripped all the useless stuff on my ship. Ask Becker uh, to follow. Yeah, okay. Well, um... Shit, I want him to come with us. Right? He'd want to. He'd want to go home. Now listen, yeah, listen, listen good. Listen. You go. Becker says, pointing a finger at you with determination. Nobody's told me what to do for many years, and I'm about to start talk taking orders from the likes of you. Am I making myself clear? Yes. Okay, he's disgusted with you. Um, ask Becker about the magazine. I because I feel like huh? Oh yeah, this is really interesting, friend. I'll talk to you when I'm finished reading it. Oh, so wait, wait, wait. I want him to finish reading it. Old. I'm gonna use a short nap. You don't mind, do you? Sleep. Why don't you sleep too? Oh, I'm not tired yet. Okay, so wait. He's asleep right now. Just keep waiting. I want him to. I want to finish the. Oh, maybe just go like northwest, maybe, and then come back. So go southeast. Maybe he's asleep. He's awoken now.
Okay. He's holding the magazine. Yeah. Okay, so just wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna see what happens. He's he's holding this magazine. It's it's okay. Uh, just go northwest. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like am am I wrong? Okay, so maybe maybe he'll maybe like what'll happen is when we get to the ship, he'll he'll be there and be like, hey, take me with you. Yeah. Um, so go southwest. Yeah, let's just do that. And then uh, south. And then south again. And southeast. Oh. oh, there he is! Whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't mean. I'm sorry. In the initiative of disassembling my ship's actuator, you let me read your magazine. You helped me get this cane, and you jammed with me. Becca recalls, but you chased my beloved Mr. Pokey away. I think you're all right, friend. I decided to come back with you. If you'll have me, how about a friend? Becker seems to be waiting patiently for your answer. Rolf Becker, botanist and zoologist supreme, is poring over an article entitled Intensive Study of Japanese Language and Customs. Yes. I'm ready to go when you are. Lead the way. Rolf Becker, the righteous old codger, is poring over a consumer review of Exoflex bodysuits, the one-piece, one-gram clothing substitute. Um, so now we go southeast. You know what's... Hmm. Wait a second. Do you remember what's the one thing we're not allowed to do? What's that? bring anything back oh that's fine we're taking becker with us baby it already said yes so southeast and then uh southwest he is yeah. an poet laureate scholar is pouring over a diagram depicting various calisthenic positions <laughs> okay yeah and what is he going to do now? The crunchy granola space dude is pouring over reviews of consumer virtual reality gear. In. Well, I guess this is it, says Becker dejectedly. He looks around slowly, takes a deep breath, and prepares to enter the ship. Remembering Warden's instructions, you leave the rusty pickaxe. All that stuff, yeah. Okay, yep. More. Um, Looking unsure of himself, Becker follows you into the ship cabin. Rolf Becker, the righteous old codger, is pouring over a recipe for new age Mugu Gai Pan. All right, sit. We're bringing Becker back. I I am loving this game. I'm I am smitten. I'm absolutely smitten. It's a pretty damn good game. Ship returns at the dock gateway and you undergo debriefing procedures. You're awarded 5 million bonus for activating the shield generator. You receive 1 million reward for return of Wolf Becker. Nice. Oh, part three. End game. what I say? End game, baby. Leonard Wharton and Sung Lee are waiting for you. The conference room is one of the most elaborate media centers you've ever seen. Display screens, buttons, and equipments of unknown function surround an impressive conference table. The table's ringed with comfortable-looking chairs. A glass door leads east. You see Sung Young Soon Lee and Leonard Warden here. Not yet, Lip. The good news is that you have activated the force shield generators that the Hechi told us about. The bad news is that there is a fifth component to the defense system, and we don't know where it is. We know where it is. That shield won't actually work until the fifth component of the cloaking system is activated. This fifth component is the command and control center. We've taken to calling it the Vertex. Vertex is neck. Because it seems to be the focal point of the four energy fields produced by the generators, you've already turned on. When the Vertex is activated, a series of onboard computers will communicate with the four shield generators and orchestrate the delicate ballet of forces necessary to warp space around the assassin surveillance station and blind it. The Vertex is in orbit around the same star as the Assassin Watchtower. The final step in the shield activation sequence requires traveling to the Vertex itself. It's here. The Savant did not give us the course code that will take you to the Vertex, but we believe the information may be stored right here on Gateway. When we ask the Savant about the Vertex, it prints the course code for Gateway and then displays a diagram of four circles arrayed around a rectangle. The circles represent the shield generators, flare brightly one at a time, and then the rectangle disappears in a flash of light to reveal a perfect silver sphere. We can't figure it out. 
Obviously, the Silver Sphere is the key, but we have no record of finding such an object. We can't initiate a full-scale search for it because news of the assassin threat would inevitably get out. I'm afraid it's up to you. You must find that sphere and bring it here as soon as possible. It's on Gateway, baby. It's on Gateway. Let's go. Let's go. Right, so we have to go East. back to the museum. Uh, no, not to the museum. Why? Yeah, we do. Oh, we didn't do the museum. That's right. You're right. You're right. Um, okay. So, uh, then Southeast. Uh, Richard Nixon is looking rather, uh, dapper. That's, oh, give him a little bit of a Richard Nixon. Um, and then South South. I am not a crook. I am not a crook. The Hitchi are not a crook. Okay, so, put disc in the thingy. Get tuning fork. Put tuning fork in toaster. <laughs> Take disc. Put disc on. Yeah. Pedestal. Okay. Now get the tuning fork. Okay. Save. <clears throat> Okay. Final countdown. Yes, it's the final countdown. Da 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 North. North again. North again. Up. To the left. To the left. Roll it back now, yo. Reverse, what reverse. Happened? Yeah. So west? West, yeah. <clears throat> Whoa, Gordon Perry walks by you, jumps into the drop shaft, and falls out of sight. Gordon Perry. No, hit wall. Now put the thing in there. He just left too, by the way. Whoever Gordon Perry is. Who's Gordon Perry? I don't remember. I don't remember either. In the yeah, slot. Oh god, what was it? Three three one two one? I think that's what it was. Three three one two one. Um, west. Or in, doesn't matter. There it is. You're in a large room. The room is empty except for a panel set into the west wall. The portal through which you entered remains open to the west. There's the sphere. Alright, and look at the sphere. Silver sphere is about the size of a tennis ball and is made of what appears to be a perfect reflective material. Upon close inspection, you notice a small, almost undetectable gold button set into the surface of the sphere. Push that button. Mm, push that gold button. I don't remember who Gordon Perry is. I wish I remembered. When you press the button, the air above the sphere shimmers and then darkens to a color seen only in the reaches of interstellar space. A thousand fiery pinpricks of light slowly appear in the darkness, and a network of colored lines spreads between them, joining them in a graceful tracery. Some unintelligible Hichi characters suspend themselves in the air. You are looking at a holographic star map, a staggering display of technology never before seen by human eyes. As you gape in amazement, the projection begins to rotate slowly, the hologram vanishes when you take your finger off the button. Okay, so go east. And then uh, east. Then down. Then south. Then northwest. And then west. Yep, she says, yeah, oh, God, Nick, you just... It did that. I didn't do that. I'm not doing that. Uh, can we restore? 
I think because you may have hit buttons more. Did you? If you. I didn't hit anything. Okay, we'll have to take that slow. Hold on. Oh, no, I know exactly what happened. When we went in here, she had something to say, and it just pushed us along, but you typed west. And so that we did more and more and more, because it just automatically put us in the conference room. So restore, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. Gold button. Push the gold button. Okay. So east. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, if you, if you typed if you like typed more than one thing, it just did more for you. Um, east again. So you just have to be careful. Down. South. Okay. Northwest. Enter once. See, at Mr. Warden and Science, people will meet you. Yep, see, see okay. Funny that they have scroll watch for the left panes, but not the transcript. Exactly. The conference room is one of the most... Yeah, okay. Uh, you see Young Soon Lee and Leonard Warden. It's not the same person. Um, Warden looks up. Have you found it? You hand over the sphere. The science chief disappears with it. Sometime later, she returns looking very excited. That was the object we needed. We were able to determine the location of the vertex. She adds the course code to your badge. Warren says, because you were success with your previous missions, it has been decided that you must be the one to travel to the Vertex and activate the final component of the cloaking system. He pauses momentarily. One last thing. While it's important for you to begin as soon as possible, the board has demanded that you undergo a psychological evaluation before you leave for this last mission. With the fate of the world hanging in the balance, it's not an unreasonable request. There's more to this game, Nick. We're never going to beat this thinking game. Um, with the fate of the world hanging in the balance, it's not an unreasonable request. The VR terminal in this building has the appropriate program. I'll alert the tech on duty that you're going to show up. The program is named Deep Psych. Once you receive a stable evaluation, you'll be authorized for flight status and should head, then head out. Good luck and Godspeed. Alright. Um, and more. Have a good night, Josh. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll have it. Well, it's archived, so um, it's archived both on YouTube and on Twitch. So the the Twitch one has a has a decay rate, so it'll eventually be taken off. But YouTube, it'll be up there for permanently. Okay. So up. It was a pleasure to have you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Um, up, Nick. I, I'm gonna get a beer. Get a beer. Get a beer. That'll keep you awake. Maybe. Keep you limber. Or will knock me out. Please don't fall asleep on stream again. <laughs> I lip. How are you, my friends? Hello, everybody. For those who are still watching and interested, I am Bogus Meat Factory. If you've never met me before, I do a variety of streaming. New stuff, old stuff, you name it, I play it. Um, a massive love for text adventures or adventure games in general. MMORPGs. Um, fighting games. Everything. Everything. Um, and starting up in just a few days, uh, on April 3rd, I'll be doing a wonderful charity stream month, um, in, in, uh, collaboration with a really great streamer, a local guy who's really awesome, the Combat King. Um, and it's for Ozone House, which is a organization that helps provide housing and food and shelter for, uh, kids who are victims of abuse, um, and troubled use and these sorts of things locally here in our area and so that's gonna be starting up on the 3rd of april so get ready for that it's gonna be fun we have a lot of cool games uh, set up to be played and stuff like this so it's gonna be a good time hi nick hi, up you go up 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 why up that's where the vr thing is for the psych wow all right um the tech is your sympathetic look. I received the authorization for you to enter Deep Psych. Now that's a nasty VR. I guess the higher ups want to make sure you don't snap under pressure. Let me snag the password for you while you lay down on the couch. Okay, so sit on the couch. The tech picks up Neotech. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. The tech picks up Neotech's guide to virtual reality and opens the manual to the last page. He unclips the device on his uniform, pushes a button, and it starts giving off a purple glow. 
He holds the device above the manual and starts to read, occasionally glancing up at the calendar. The text sees you watching and says, This nanotech entry protection is a pain in the ass. The only thing inside this reader is a cheap ultraviolet lamp. I took it apart once, he grins. Anyways, the password for, for, for today is... Um, let's see. Damage. Okay. Well, that's Punch it up on the keyboard on the side of the couch and you're off. Okay. Um, uh, wear collar. Isn't it a collar? Yeah, no. wear collar. And then type damage. Oh, shoot. Deep psych. Okay, now type damage. Uh, what do we do? Hold on. Oh, we got a message too. Shit. Yeah, hold on. It's fine. Um, insert card, or put card in slot. Uh... States that sleeping in common areas is against regulation. You've been charged a $100 fine for your violation. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. $100. Psh. All right, end session. We got millions now. Uh, get all. All right, and then east. Northwest. And then after that, up. Okay. Hold on, so let's see. On the chair, okay, look on the couch, there's a gold padded ring next to the thing. Read the sign. Okay, no. Um, look at screen then. Okay, uh, it's already set to it from when we did it before, so sit on couch. Wear collar. Look at the collar. Okay, and then type damage. In response, you hear a faint tinny ping. Um, there we go. Press the button. The couch starts to hum with power and the collar begins to glow a dark blue. Everything around you fades to a milky white. Then a picture begins to form. Solid blocks of blacks and purples slowly resolve into the rocky walls of a gloomy cave. A dark spot on the floor quickly stretches out into a crack that runs the width of the cavern. You suddenly realize that one of the... One end of a sturdy rope is tied around your waist. To your horror, a demon suddenly appears on the other side of the crack, and the other end of the rope knots itself around him. A huge door slowly forms in the wall behind the demon, and then a red button pops into existence and hovers in the air right in front of you. Don't escape. We're not pressing escape. Um. Oh, hold on. We, there's things here. We have a knife and boot, and an, he's got an axe. Rope, some boots, and a blue coverall. Look at the knife. It's a sharp implement with a dangerous curved blade and a handle of pearl worn smooth from long use. The crack dividing the room opens with a shutter. It continues to widen. The demon looks down at the crack and back at you. He snarls as if you have some had something to do with it. Pull rope. No, he's on the other side of the... We're on two opposite sides. <clears throat> you give the rope a sharp tug. The demon plants himself and resists. Then he gives an answering tug, which pulls you off balance for a moment. Although you manage to recover, the demon jumps up and down and laughs. Um, there's a rock. Get a rock. Throw a rock at him. Oh. Oh. 
Chasm's nine feet across. Oh, now pull. He drops his weapon and starts clawing frantically at the door. You pull the rope a sharp tug. The demon plans himself to resist, then he gives an answering tug. The chasm walls give another lurch, and you finally run out of rope. Both you and the demon teeter on the edge and then pull each other into the abyss. You fall for what seems forever before the scene finally dissolves around you. The hues and colors of the virtual world swirl and look soon you're back in the real world. Well, you didn't quite get through. Tell you what, read the screen. Read the screen. Subject demonstrated both passivity and refusal to deal with his fear. Progress. Subject yeah, must. We need to stab the demon. Yeah, but he, we can't reach him, right? Why not? There's a big chasm between us. Just like you jump. Push button. Let's see. Do it right away. You plunge. Oh, okay. Well, I guess at this point you could. You plunge the knife deep into the demon's chest. He staggers backward and claws at the dagger, unable to pull it out. He looks up at you in confusion and then fades away. The hues and colors of the virtual world. Uh oh. Didn't quite get through. So read the screen. It's because we were too aggressive. Yeah. Oh, Lip says, could you cut the rope with a knife? Mm. There you go. So, push button. That's it, Lip. That's that. That's the key. I would say, if there's a demon, stabbing it is pretty reasonable. I don't know. He just looks mean. He's not necessarily mean. He's got an axe. So, cut rope with knife. You slice at the cord around your waist and toss the rope away with a flick of your wrist. Your moment of triumph is short-lived, however, as the scene dissolves around you. Well, you didn't quite get through. Tell you what, read the screen and go back in. Oh my god. Okay, let's read the screen. Let's see. Uh, subject cut the ties to his fear, metaphorically cutting himself off from that part of his personality. To progress, subject must learn to accept and use his fear. Just open the door. Oh, it's... tell the demon to open the door? Maybe. Yeah, so push button. <clears throat> tell demon to open door. Or lift bar. No, you gotta say, tell demon to lift the bar. Look at supports. Plank that rests on iron supports near the top. Golden light flitters through the chasm opens wide. You know what? You jump into the pit. Okay, yeah. Um, we need to hug the demon. Hug the demon. Tell the demon you've been trying to reach him about his car's extended warranty. That's to tell us, yeah, that's exactly what we needed to do. Fled irrationally from his fear, choosing death over confrontation. Yep. So, push button. Um. He advances towards the demon, he backs away, clawing the air with his talent to keep you at bay. Okay. Um. You leap over the crack and land safely on the other side. Okay, there we go. The crack pulls back even further. The resulting chasm is now about three feet across. The demon takes a tentative swipe at you. You dodge easily and notice that his follow-through leaves him wide open for a counter-attack. Um, don't, don't stab him. Don't stab him. Don't stab him, please. Please, it's going to do the same thing as it did last time we stabbed him. It's not a shit puzzle. Hug the demon. He's open. Hug him. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, stab the demon. And now we're back. Chaos, yay! We don't need to do anything. We just need to open the door. That's it. It's not a shit puzzle. You're a shit puzzle, Nick. I'm sorry, that was actually mean. Um, lift bar. Okay, it's out of reach. Um... The action leaves his torso vulnerable to an attack. Taking advantage of the opening of the demon's defense, you thrust your knife into his chest. He grabs at your blade as he falls backwards into the chasm, pulling you along with him. I don't get why you would tell me that he's available to... We can get the rock now. We can get the rock. We can knock him out. Rock. Not knife. And that way he goes into the chasm. Rock his socks off. So cut the or get axe for or get get rock first, yeah. Get rock. Oh, okay. Never mind. Look at the rock. I wanna see where this rock is. It's across it's on the other side. But we couldn't get it when we were on that side. I, I don't think we can interact with it. But why is it there then? I, I look at the rock. Look at the rock. I just want to look at it. Okay. So no, it's nothing. So we cut the rope first. And then what do we do? Push him? Maybe we just push him. It's just like any any time we interact with it. We Well, we can't touch the bar. Cut the rope. Like if we cut the rope, it ends it. No, it doesn't. Not now. It does. No, it doesn't. No, See? We failed. Stop. Stop. The axe slips from the demon's hands in a rather frantic lunge. He appears especially vulnerable at this moment. Get the axe now. Pick up the axe, but it twists and turns in your grasp as it has a life of its own. Okay, so open open lift uh, open door. Lift bar. Remove bar. We, we can't. Oh. We try. Break, use axe on supports. Lift the demon. You grab the demon, but in his frantic state, he hardly seems to notice. Instead of attacking you, he continues to claw against the door. You hoist him over your head, and he immediately pushes the plank off at supports. The plank clatters to the ground. The door swings open, and still carrying the demon, you stride into the golden room beyond. There you go, Nick. It, was, it told us to use the demon to help us get out. The hues and colors of the virtual world swirl in a soft cloud. Soon you're back in the real world. Bam. I gotta lift people up. The tech glance is over to you from the alcove. Way to go. Not many people figure that thing out. Personally, I think the program's kind of subjective. But anyway, I've alerted Warden to your success. By the way, if this means you're shipping out, I might not see you again. I'm going to Earthside for the worldwide VR conference, he smiles. I'll be back in a couple of months. Good luck on whatever you're off to. All right, down. Oh, sorry, remove collar. Demon. Eat demon. I think I'm just irritated because I'm like, I feel that we're, we're, I'm feeling a little. You're tired and you're grumpy. No, it's not, it's not tired. It, I, I've thought this game is going to stop at least twice now. Remove collar. And I, I don't like that when I'm like, oh, I want, no, I didn't. Doing the VR thing seems extra. The internet says to do other things to the demon. Oh my. All right, down. Uh, southeast. North. Down. South. 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 We got this, Nick. All right, time to put in that code. Do your duty. 
Don't get it wrong. We hadn't saved afterwards. You already know what to do for a living. The wrongest answer is usually in my inbox. Yep. The truth. How are you doing, by the way, Telesia? It's been so long. What have you been up to? Have you been playing anything good? Any good games lately? Look at the panel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could use more work, yeah. Went back to Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. Good game. Very good game. I'm going to get that game for the GBA. Oh, dude, yeah. Mojito is so good. The animation, that's fantastic. That is correct, yeah. Oh, that's right. It is on the Switch expansion pack. Oh, that's so good. All right, here we go, Nick. The final countdown. Do -do -do -do. Again. When did you think it would end before? I think the VR thingy was pushing it. If we could just have gone to the next mission. I don't know why we need to do the VR puzzle. Uh, I mean... I feel like you plausibly could have ended it after we got the defense system. I, I, I feel like the, it felt like there should be like one more thing, and then we're done. Your ship is suddenly rocked by the pull of powerful tractor beams as it is forcibly drawn towards a satellite orbiting the planet. Metallic clanging echoes through the ship as the docking takes place. The controls of your ship go dead. All right. Uh, uh, was it open hatch? I'm going to upgrade to a family expansion pass to share with my housemates to be. It's cheaper than my significant other and I getting individual ones. It's true. Smart move. Uh, yeah, out. Bogus, I set off the cap month alert earlier and didn't realize you were on. It didn't go off in here, did it? I didn't set it up yet. I didn't set it up yet. Sorry. TKK. So, I was going to get it all set up tonight. The oxygen atmosphere and the blinking lights around the room indicate that the Hichi satellite is still operational. The thick windows look out over solar energy collectors and the distance in the, and in the distance a planet hangs in the sky. The watchtower is nowhere to be seen. The small chamber is packed with Hichi technology. There is a engraved metal compartment in the north wall. It is closed and on its face you see a large button. A heavy metal door is set in the east wall. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's technically April Fool's Day for you now, I know, right? Sorry, it is April Fool's, yeah. Dude, sorry, TKK, yeah. I'll get it set up to the, over this weekend, so for sure. We're gonna get everything ready to go. Sorry. Uh, oh. TKK says, Nick, that you have glorious hair. Oh, thank you. It is messy as all said, but I appreciate that. He's an archaeobotanist. This is just his life. This is just how he lives. Yeah, the, the chaos and <laughs> keratin is how I go. Um, okay, so engraved middle compartment. Look at the compartment. This hair looks better than mine. I don't. I, I, I wish I had hair. What am I doing? Uh, look at the panel. Look at panel. Long flat panels filled with solar cells stretch out on the exterior of the thing, drawing energy. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Press look at button. look at compartment. Engraved middle compartment. Yeah. Press. Button. Push it. Button. Okay. So the entire room hums to life. Lights everywhere flash and cycle. Before a minute has passed, however, the chaos dies back down. In the resulting quiet, the lone compartment on the north wall pops open, revealing a silver globe and a metallic ring. Get globe and ring, baby. Take globe and ring. <laughs> my April Fool's prank was to send my significant other a can of green beans. No explanation, just beans. <laughs> okay, look at the globe. This is another one. It affects it. Okay, so look at the color. Oh, there it is. 
You open the clasp and slide the ring around your neck. The result is not uncomfortable, and although the collar is snug against your flesh, it does not confine or restrict you in any way. When you close the clasp, blue sparks start appearing on the surface of the silvery globe. They bathe the room in an eerie violet light. Now touch the sphere. Or get sphere? Or is it, what is this? What is this thing called? Globe? There it is. Carefully, you lower your hands onto the silver surface of the globe. Blue fire leaps from the points of contact, flowing up your arms to the collar. The pinpricks of electricity make the hair on your arms stand straight up. The collar sparks and emits a high-pitched whine. An arc of electricity fires across the globe's surface. You start to feel a little sick, and your vision becomes hazy, as if you were squinting through a blue fog. A disembodied mechanical voice says, Greetings, visitor. Welcome to the Guardian. Cool beans. <laughs> cool oh, beans. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's a Heechee. The, the Heechee are horrible polygons. Power line, baby. Woo. I am Heechee, created virtual personality or artificial intelligence program. I am contained in the collar you wear. Please remain in contact with the globe and do not remove the collar while I'm talking. We have much to discuss in very little time. You are to be congratulated for completing the shielding sequence. Unfortunately, doing so has created a new difficulty. A living assassin resides inside the watchtower, and by activating the final component of the event system, you have revealed your presence to him. By now, he will have composed a warning message that will alert his race to the existence of a new intelligent species that must be destroyed. This is precisely what the Heechee were trying to avoid. In our favor, the message cannot be sent until the watchtower achieves another half orbit around the planet, at which time the transmission path will become clear. This will occur in approximately 23 hours. The collar that you wear contains a program that will alter the content of the warning message to that of a standard all-clear message. It can only do so, however, if it is properly connected to the watchtower system. This is something only a physical being, such as yourself, can do. Oh, Max as Powerline from the beginning of the movie. Dude. Mm. Dude. Stand up. Woo. The success of the plan relies on one additional step, the elimination of the assassin himself. If he remains alive, he will eventually find a way to inform others of his kind about the existence of humans in the Hichi. The assassin is not a meat intelligence like you. He's an electronic intelligence, as am I. You can think of him as a sentient computer program that lives inside the circuits of the watchtower. You cannot destroy the assassin, but I can. It is for this purpose that I was created. At my core, I am a virus program. The plan is simple. A door will open from this room into the travel pod. Go inside. The pod will travel over to the watchtower and attach itself to a special access port on the exterior. You'll see a globe similar to the one here, as well as a hatch. While wearing the collar, touch the globe. This will transfer me into the circuits of the watchtower. Oh, dude, this is okay. okay. If all goes well, the hatch will open to reveal an intricate panel with a color circular indentation on it. Remove the collar and place it on the panel. The colors program will modify the alert message. When you've done these things, the controls to your ship will respond to your commands. You will be free to go. Okay. This should be easy then, right? I know you're wondering why the Hichi did not carry out this plan themselves. The reason is that when the Hichi built the system, defense system, they didn't know there was a live assassin in the watchtower. When they learned of its presence, they became afraid that if they tried to kill the sentry and failed, the assassin would send out the warning message that would trigger the annihilation of the Hichi race. This is why they did not activate the system they had so carefully constructed. Instead, they left the system intact, waiting for another race to develop the capabilities necessary to turn it on. That time is now at hand. Good luck. Wait a second. Wait a second. What? They they didn't turn it on to save the race because they were afraid that by turning on to save the race that the race would die. Well, so they what they what they die. meant was they want to stop the assassins more than anything, and so they had to sacrifice okay. themselves so that way the AI could formulate the plan that could actually do it for the next race that finds them. Yeah. Lip says I was pondering about the song "Eye to Eye" as shower thoughts the other day, dude. Mm, such a good dude. The best. Okay. Let's see. The walls are cylindrical and covered with Heechi symbols. A large plate window spans the upper half of the room, affording a view of the exterior of the satellite and the planet beyond. There's a thick door to the west, which hangs open. The room is small and confining, and the only way you can fit inside is to lie on your stomach with your face nearly pressed into the north wall. The whole of this wall is a huge metal iris, like the shutter of a camera. A pedal by your feet protrudes from the south wall. Push pedal. Yeah. 
hear a hissing sound. The yeah. thick metal door clangs shut. A few seconds of silence pass, and then the pod lurches forward. Here we go. Through, Through the, the plate window, yeah, you see it. the planet's surface whisk by. In just a few moments, the awesome watchtower comes into view, a moon-shaped satellite so large that it actually has a shallow atmosphere. I've got this, dude. The travel pod continues without hesitation, approaches a large spire jutting from the watchtower's surface. Not long after, the pod breaks and attaches itself to the side of the spire. The north wall dilates open, revealing a small alcove lined with a strange black metal that you've never seen before. To one side of the alcove is a globe, and to the other is a hatch. So, touch the globe. Yep, with a great deal of apprehension, you lower your hands towards the globe. Upon contact, red fire shoots up your arms. The pain is a unique experience, worse than anything you've ever felt or even imagined. The agony becomes unbearable. Red flames dance in your vision. Just as the red haze threatens to overwhelm you, it disappears. Everything becomes clear and the pain subsides. The hatch clicks and falls open. You crawl towards the hatch, but instead of the expected wall of metal, it seems to open on a conventional doorway. Beyond the door, you hear music and laughter. You shake your head, but no trace of the headache or fogginess remains. Suddenly, a young woman appears at the hatch opening. She smiles and says, A new arrival! How wonderful! She sees your collar. Oh, poor dear. Did the Hichi program put you through a great deal of pain? Let me take that. Before you can react, she reaches over and removes the collar from your neck. We all went through the same process. I'll just add it to my collection. She drops the metal ring into a box that contains at least 50 other collars. What? <clears throat> just like it. We also can't have lethal weapons floating around. I'm afraid I'll have to take your gun as well. With an apologetic shrug, the she gently lifts the gun away with two fingers, as if it were a smelly sock. Now come with me, please. She reaches over and takes your hand. As she guides you through the hatch, you're too shocked and mystified to even think of resisting. The collars in the box is like keys in a fishbowl, right? Oh, dude. <laughs> this is immense. The vaulted ceiling rises almost out of sight, and the towering windows that look out on the star-filled galaxy create the illusion that the room never ends. The scene is graced by an artificial waterfall that feeds a large burbling stream and a crystal bridge leads north across the stream to a secluded bar. Three large alcoves to the east, west, and south hold amusement booths, each of which feature a different game. The center of the room is dominated by a large marble fountain on which people are gathered in what appears to be a spontaneous party. A serving robot wheels around serving exotic treats to those who ask. To the southeast, you see a closed hatch. The room's decorations is rounded out by a small potted plant. To the southeast, you see a closed hatch. Okay. <clears throat> Your beautiful young guide notices you puzzled expression. You must be curious. Allow me to explain. Like you, we all are all prospectors here. Through the years, each of us stumbled on those coordinates by accident when we randomly punched in a course code just to see where it would take us. When we arrived, our ships went dead and we were trapped. The Ishi are keeping us here, but no one knows why. The Hichi have made things comfortable for us, however. They've seen to all of our needs, including food, drink, and entertainment. You must look around and decide for yourself if this is truly a trap, or if it is instead the ultimate reward that every gateway prospector has always hoped for. She hands you a golden card with credit embossed on it. Here's your complimentary credit line. Use it at any of the game booths at the, or at the bar. Have fun. Oh my god. This doesn't make sense. Why would I have a credit line? <laughs> it's all an illusion, Nick. I know, but like... Save. Oh god. Why would I have a credit line? Like, uh, but, why, why in this utopia... Why in heaven do I have a credit card? Because we're in a, it's reading your thoughts of what it thinks is most desirable to people in this society now, and the society's in a post-capitalistic nightmare. Oh, thank you, Vito. Um, go north. Well, we can read okay. this. 
So you climb over the crystal bridge, admiring the tumultuous flow of the waterfall into the stream. Tumul the yes. From the bright lights it's the, the tumultuous flow that I'm admiring. Yes. Of the bar. Secluded bar. The bar is very dim, lit only by the starlight from the huge windows. In this intimate atmosphere, the women around the curved bar seem especially attractive. A few of them seem to have noted your arrival with interest. Behind it, a bar bot trundles quickly. Um... From customer to customer, serving drinks. Uh, wait. Uh, a uh, poker a game. A poker game seems to be in session at a table to the west. A closed door is located to the north wall, and a bridge crosses the stream to the south. We aren't going to beat this tonight. Woman draws circles on the bar with a finger staring at you. Oh, we aren't going to beat this game tonight, are we? I don't think so. North. Let's just see what happens. Open door. You try and slide the door open with your bare hands, but you can't seem to get a grip on it. After a couple times, you give up in frustration. I don't want to talk to this lady. West. It's a distraction. Fuck that lady. Sorry, but a rough man rumbles. We're in the middle of the game. Maybe a little later. Okay, talk to the lady. Where is she? Sit, sit. Oh. Just sit. Um. Look at woman. She so closely fits her ideal of the perfect woman that it seems someone designed her to your specifications. Auburn hair lies atop sculpted features, and she wears a clinging dress that accentuates her natural curves. And leaves the perfect amount to the imagination. This didn't say lithe. Um, then just go south. I don't want to deal with this lady. Go uh, west. Her name is Lithe. The hostess follows you into the game booth and says, This is my favorite game. I'd really like to see how you do here. Guess your weight booth. From the large banner on the wall, it's clear that the game here is to have your weight guessed. Behind the curved counter, Robot Barker shuffles back and forth, occasionally bumping into things. The scale for the patrons is a readout with huge numbers that would be visible from miles away. Next to the scale is a sign. What? What woman? Is... His favorite game is somebody who guesses her weight. <laughs> Again, Nick, it's your brain here. The game bot trundles up, peers in your direction through an inch thick, virtually opaque glass, and says, Ah, a customer! He squints a bit more and asks, Would Madam like to try our luck? Just insert your card into the slot. Only five dollars, I guess. Insert the card, Nick. You use the, yeah. In slot. When did I become a madam? Thank you. Oh, it's the lady that you're guessing. It's people like you that make my job the joy that it is now. Let me see. The game bot makes a show of looking you over. I have to say you weigh 389 pounds. So step on the scale. We'll see if you win. Hold on. Drop all. Uh, get on scale. You step on the scale, the huge numbers on the display roll for a few seconds and finally come to stop at 163. The game bot sticks his face up to the display and squints at it for a few moments. Oh my, he finally exclaims. How could I have been so far off? We have a winner. Lights flash, sirens wail, whistle shriek, and a small crowd around the booth begins to applaud. Madam, why does he keep calling me madam? He's talking to the lady. I don't think so. Oh. Like he's referring to us. Maybe we're a lady. Of course. The difference we has been on. become ladies? No. The difference. Oh, maybe. The difference has been automatically added to your credit line. Congratulations. After he presses a small hints button, the gold card pops out of the slot. The game of grabs it and presses it back in your palm. Get all. Yeah, we all become ladies. East. Welcome, sexy, sexy ladies. The dream. East. One second. Damn. Look at me. Oh, east. So 
So gaudy lights frame this booth like a movie marquee. Spinners and brightly colored signs are everywhere. While still more lights flash and whirl around the walls, the word that instantly doesn't leap into your mind is subtle. On a shelf against the far wall are three pyramid formations of six bottles each. Behind the counter, a game bot wheels back and forth, barking, Everyone's a winner! A sign and a slot are set into the post behind the counter. On the counter, you see a ball. Game bot rolls up to you and exclaims, Oh, look what we have here. You look like a man who enjoys a challenge. I'll bet you could do this blindfolded. Just insert your card into the friendly slot and try your skill. Insert the card. All right, a true gamesman you are, sir. Ready to take up the challenge. Well, I shan't delay you. Take this ball and toss it towards your bot yon bottles. Your skill and it... Oh! Nick. Nick. What? What do what? we do to get out of a virtual reality simulation? You break it? You do the unexpected. The things it doesn't want you to do. Throw a ball at robot? Hold on. Take this ball and toss it towards John Bottles. Yeah, throw a ball at, peer, at, at, sorry, at robot. Change the course in midair, and then it makes... Okay. On the collection of bottles, the pyramids fly apart. Amazing. Okay. So, okay, so we, we, okay, we have to break each one of the games. Is what we have to do. <clears throat> so, okay. Uh, insert card in slot. <clears throat> uh, out. Can't have you leaving with the equipment. He definitely removes the ball from your possession and a button press later. The credit card flies out. Okay. Um, go, uh, south. Oh, they gather around this booth, making it impossible to force your way through. Perhaps you try again later. Southeast? Um, and, okay, so, okay. Um, hold on, look at the, the robot. The robot has food, right? Get treats. Okay, and look at the plant. There's a plant here, too. It's a look decorative. Okay. Look at the bridge. There's a lot to take in here. Oh, my gosh. Set our towering windows. Um... Jump in the fountain. Get in fountain. Okay. Um, north. Okay, so, uh, uh, look at Barbot. The Barbot is made in the shape of a woman. She moves rapidly, seeming to serve everyone at once. Uh, order drink. <clears throat> Let's see, the barbot rolls up and says, Good evening, sir. Nice night tonight. Why don't you relax while I get you one of your special drinks? Guaranteed to lighten your step. Only $5. The barbot rummages under the counter and produces a bottle labeled The Good Stuff. She pours a glass and sets it down on the counter. Your credit card pops out a slot and you grab it. Uh, get drink. Okay, no, hold on. No, 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 no. Unexpected, Nick. South. Or, no, 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 throw a drink at woman. Throw a drink at woman. There's what it is. Is you tempted to read yourself with a shot glass, the service roll rolls up and whisks it away, saying, Let me take that for you. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's go to the. No. You gotta have a fairly good sized bankroll if you wanna sit in. No debtors here, and frankly, you don't look like lucky. Now beat it. 
So we need to get more money? I don't know if that's right. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I mean, is there anything else to interact with? You're right. Um, I Give drink to woman. Give drink to woman. Thank you. She accepts the drink and slowly savors the liquor while gazing at you over the rim of the glass. When she finishes, she returns the glass and gives you a beautiful smile. Do you want to keep getting her drunk? <laughs> Order drink. Give drink to woman. No. Um. Give drink to robot. Okay, uh, give drink to man. No, Flint is his name, apparently. No, that's not what we need to do. Okay. Ask woman about... Bar. You greet her warmly and she looks at you mischievously and snuggles up beside you. Hello, handsome. I've been waiting for watching you. You're new here, aren't you? I'll bet you have the most exciting stories to tell. She glances at the back room. Would you like to go someplace private where we can talk? No. <laughs> don't, 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 yeah, don't save over a post capitalistic night. Remember, we only have so many hours. We have 23 hours. Say yes. Oh. Say yes. Oh. Um. I think we have to kind of establish some things first, and then, then, because I don't think it's meant for us to realize that we're in a simulation yet. We'll go when you're ready. Okay. So, um, south. Hold on. Oh, she touched after you, but then turns back to the bar dejected. Why? I don't know why. Restore. So we say yes. Bar is very dim. Yep. So, yeah. Enter, and then yes. Idan, we'll go when you're ready. Uh, stand. Okay. Um, tell woman to follow. Oh, tell woman, or say I'm ready. Oh, um, okay, say ready. Just type ready. Okay. What are the... Uh, we went north before? No, north is a closed door. We can't open. Maybe that's the room? Um... No. Uh, uh, take woman. Get woman. <laughs> you know I'm interested, Sugar. I just think we should go somewhere a little more private. Remember I mentioned something about a back room? Oh, yeah. Say yes. That's great, lead on. We'll go when you're ready. North? There's a back room, right? Ask, ask, ask woman about room. Take off your clothes in the main room. Get shrifty. Um, about back room? Private? So I think... Oh, I think we have to earn that. <clears throat> and we have to earn it. So, like, in order to get her in the back room. We probably have to like win a poker game. Yeah, win this stuff I so we got it. Farm money. That might be what we have to do. With I don't know. The, the weight game. Yeah, and then in that moment when we have this lady and she's ready to for us to do her, and we're just like, nope, we walk away, and then it all fades. You know. I don't like this. Nick's like, I don't. I, this is too horny for me. I'm with you, Nick. I'm with you. Uh, just I'm go south. Go south. 
So go west. So let's look here, cause there's there's stuff. Look at the screen. One second. Slot. No, get on the scale. I'm gonna see if he's right. So I wanna I wanna get on there with this stuff on, with this stuff still with me. Twenty dollar grand prize, like that's not enough. Insert slot or insert curtain slot. Oh, get off scale. You can't. You're on. The, you're on the scale. Oh, it changed all the time. Uh, get on the scale. Okay. So his number changes all the time. Um, There's a napkin? Look at the napkin. What is that? When did we get a napkin? A maintenance key? Oh, that's... Three, five, seven, eight. Oh, that was a different thing. Sorry. Yeah, those are the other things. I mean, maintenance keys from the from the previous thing too. Yeah. Um. There's a bangle and a banner. What is the bangle? The bangle is the thing we're wearing. Oh. Okay. Take a look for me real quick. Sorry, Nick. I know it's getting late. We can do this. Behind the curve counter, robot. Occasionally bumping into things, the scale for the patrons is a readout with the huge numbers that would be visible from miles away. Uh, read the sign. If the guess is not within, so we have to mess with the system. We're trying to be 160. We're trying to be whatever his weight is. Yeah. Uh, look at the scale. I don't think this tells anything. Look at the display. It, there's going to be something. No, okay. Never mind. That's not. Whoops. Off. We look at the wrong display. All right. So, uh, East, I don't know. What's in our inventory? We're on the scale again. Yeah, 542 pounds. Like, um, put robot on scale. Get game bot. I wonder if we can pick up the game bot. Okay, push game bot. It doesn't retaliate. Okay. Um. No, that's not gonna work. It's not. That's not what we need. No, it's not gonna work. We need. We need something to to fix that. Um. All right. So go east. Just leave. He does say madam, right? You must bring out your platinum card. Yeah. Can't leave this line around. Uh look at look at the key, the card. Look at the credit card. Um All right. Uh Look at the treat we got. What is the treat? We got a treat. It's five dollars. What is five dollars? We have seventy-five dollars. Yes. That's why we can't play the poker game. Yeah, I know. Just find a way to make money. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah. Well, but let's see. Uh, look, can we look at the treat we have? Huh? Look at the treat. 
we got a treat from the robot. Random green swirls and piece of food that is both elegant and eat the tree. Yeah, you're supposed to eat the tree. Um. Okay. Uh, have a good night, cannoli. Pee on the robots. Speaking of which, I need to pee. I'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. Please stay here. You got this. I believe in you. I'm gonna pee. No, I, I, I am actually a little irritated at this. This kills the vibe for me. Southeast. Okay, so I can't go southeast. And north is the secluded bar. Boink. Hello, I'm back. Okay, so can we go? Can we go and do? Uh, go, go, throw the thing, throw the ball, throw the ball, whatever. Trying to lose. I know. How throw do you lose? Because you always win. Throw the ball. Let's see if there's more to this place. Now remember it said it wanted because we had the there's another booth that we haven't gone to, but we hadn't done all the games yet. Maybe that has opened up. Maybe it wants us to play all the games, like to get the fact that we can't lose. I, I only see two games. Go west. There's a booth to the south that had a crowd that that broke things up. So west and then south. See? It's open up now because we had to play the games. Wait. It's just this? South was this? But that's yeah. the same game. Hold on. A robot burger shows back and forth occasionally bumping into things. The scale for the page is a readout with huge numbers. Peers in your direction through inch the customer. Yeah, there's just three things that we can interact with. Well, there's the bar, this, and the... Go north in and go west. Okay. Now go west. Yeah. What the hell? Okay. That's the ball throw booth. That's not right, right? That's not right. I don't remember. No, okay, so go east. I'm sorry, Nick. None of this is right. Go east now. I swear that wasn't right. We have the fortune booth. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. 
At the popular booth, which is decorated with gaudy lights, streamers, and signs, the booth is manned by a game bot who seems to really enjoy his work. He rolls back and forth in front of a large wheel that has a lot, nine numbered sections on it. The counter in front of him also has nine slots, one for every number on the wheel. Gamebot barks, hurry, hurry, place your bets on the lucky wheel. $50 a bet, but worth... Oh, we had to have 50 bucks. So, worth it. Every nickel, play the most popular game around. Separate up, my good man. $50 a pop might seem a little steep for a $100 prize, but we're the most fun around and nobody gets a... I think, okay. Um, read the sign. Okay. Um, so, put card in four slot. Slot four. Sorry. Maybe four. It makes a soft click and the number begins to glow. The card then pops out in your hand. The game master says, please hold on to your card. If too many people bet, it gets a bit confusing when it comes time to reclaim them. Any other takers? Get your bets in now before the big wheel starts spinning. Put our card in another number. Looks down at your second bet. If it were possible for a permanently fixed smile to frown, you'd swear it was happening. The gambler gives you a pleading look and says, You realize you cannot win both of your bets. One of them must lose. The game bot shakes his head violently and then turns back to the big wheel. A well dressed man glides to the front and immediately slides his card into the eighth slot. He looks down his nose at you and states, Imperiously, I'm going to win, you know. I always win. All bets are in very good. No more, please. The wheel's about to start turning. We have a. We have. A, okay. Yeah. Put card in. Yeah. In one slot. Slot one. I'm sorry, no more bets. So we have to lose, and we can't. We're not supposed to lose. That's what happened there. The huge wheel spins quickly. The game pot and the crowd stared anxiously. As it slows, the people around you appear almost panic stricken. The card slides into the. Oh, and, um. The wheel spins, stops on number four, but then suddenly backtracks to five. The crowd steps back, and the game bot flattens himself against the counter. He turns to stare at you. You can't win, he says in front of the oscillating wheel. That's impossible. It doesn't follow. The rules. The wheel moves faster and faster between the two numbers. Screams erupt from the crowd as the world shakes. The maddened gamebot lunges forward and falls on the counter. Everything starts to become blurry. Then reality suddenly shatters and you're left in darkness. Here we go. Tendrils of smoke swirl around you and gradually coalesce into a blazing wall of flame. Through the inferno, you see a demon behemoth stand sitting on a mammoth throne. The hideous creature drops his gaze to you and favors you with a sardonic grin. Hey, Satan. Hi. How's it going, Satan? <laughs> Welcome, human, to my domain. I'm the Keeper of the Gate. It's my task and pleasure to preside over your eternal torment. You have stupidly thrown away your chance at virtual pleasure. Now you shall pay with unceasing pain and sorrow. All right, Satan. Come on, dude. You didn't have to get jiggy with the lady or anything. Escape from my realm was impossible. Even your inevitable death will prove... Provide no release, and it will only bring a new cycle of agony and suffering. Four torments shall you have, and four times your four ways to die. I'll delay you no longer. Go into my world and taste its fruit. I'm sure it'll find you appetizing. Okay, Satan. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Ooh. Piles of thick gray ash cover the rocky ground like a threadbare carpet. Scattered flames dance around a porous rock ledge that drops off into an inferno. From the depths of the flames rise a nightmare vision, a writhing, multi-headed heated hydro. Pairs of eyes dart back and forth, taking you in with a disturbing, sinister intelligence. A pair of blue portals indicate egress to the north and south. You're a, you see a rusty sword here. After regaining your senses, you notice that most of what you're carrying has disappeared, leaving you with only your coveralls. Get the sword. Yeah. And then go south. Let's not engage with this. Demon Gauntlet. Two glowing blue portals stand at either end of an immense cavern. Connecting them is a long, precarious catwalk that rises above a fiery abyss. The cavern walls are notched with narrow cliffs upon which are perched hordes of screaming demons who wave pointed weapons at you and dare you to traverse their dangerous gauntlet. Do it, south. Let's go. 
One of the demons sit, lobs a pointed rock at your head. You easily duck and it falls into the abyss below. The demon looks disappointed and angrily looks around for more ammunition. Keep going. Stones and other identifiable objects fly uncomfortably close to you from both sides of the cavern. Many of them cause you to dodge and nearly lose your balance. Some of the demons frustrated with the misses start to gather together a rope net. Keep going south. The demons have a rope net on, at you. Heave a rope net at you. Try to dive out of the way, but there's not enough room on the catwalk, and the net ensnares you. Cut rope with sword. You start to hack at the rope net with the sword. Some of the ropes fall away, but quite a few remain. Some of the demons see in your plight start to pool their ammunition. One of them produces a makeshift sack, and the rest load up with stones, dead animals, and other items you don't recognize. Um, can we do that again? Yeah. The loose net falls around your feet. The largest, meanest demon you've ever seen, although you don't really have all that much experience with him, grabs the sack, rolls it around his head, and releases it straight at you. Freed from the net, you take a swipe at the sack and knock it into the catwalk, spilling most of the garbage into a pile. South, baby! <clears throat> you take another cautious step. Mad and the demons begin hurling everything they can grab at you. Some even pick up their neighbors and toss them in your direction. The sheer quantity of missiles alerts you to the danger of staying here much longer. South. South. Glowing portal room. This chamber appears to be a temple of some sort, suffered, suffused with an ancient evil that claws at your heart and leaves your mouth dry. Silver mirrors are affixed to the walls, ceiling, and floor. Hideous demonic statues have been carved into the remaining rock in the corners. Each is labeled with a single name. Glowing portals are set into the north and south mirrors. Their lights contributing to the chamber's eerie atmosphere. Sorry, Nick, I know you're so tired. We can do this. We can do this. Um, alright, so we have, oh, a Zazel, look at the, look at the, hold on, so each one has a name, look at the mirrors, the mirrors set into the walls, ceiling and floor are forged from silver and are highly polished, although they seem very old. The light from the portals is thrown back and forth between them, casting a bluish hue over everything in the room. It seems to support your weight well. Look at Abaddon? Like, what is... Oh, they all have names. Yeah. So look at Abaddon. Where do you spell that? A-B-A-D-D-O-N. Statues hidden by shadows. You can make out the dark form of long, hooked wings, but exact features escape you. And then look at Aishma, which is... It's in the that was word bank. Long talent fingers, a glare in the room with multifaceted eyes, and its hideous grin reveals sharp wicked fangs. Okay. I don't go south. We can go south. Let's just go south. This is a huge natural cavern. An eerie landscape of malformed stalagmites and stalactites. In the Stygian gloom, you notice that the point of a nearby stalagmite is broken off. Leaving behind a flat stump. You hear a scuffle, but can't pin on where it's coming from because of the echoes. Uh, get stump? Okay. Um. You can keep going south. Yeah, keep going south, yeah. Okay. Uh, kill Hydra. Oh, there's a rock here. Look at the rock. <laughs> Maybe we gotta break the mirrors. Why are I'm you guessing. so obsessed with rocks? I feel like we gotta throw rocks at things. Yep. So north. And then north. Break mirrors with rock. Oh, we don't have the rock anymore? Okay. 
Enter mirrors. No, okay. So go south again to that rock. I want to see if we can do something with the hydras with it then. I think each room is kind of self-contained almost. Yeah, so south. Get rock. Egg. You can't take the rock. Oh. I thought it was we could before. Ooh, do it again. The decapitated neck swings back and forth in a frenzy, spewing its gore everywhere. Amazingly, the neck stops bleeding and begins to heal at accelerated rate. Uh, do it again anyways. Again. One of the mouths slowly closed over your torso, you seem powerless to move, and you wonder about this eerie paralysis right up until the moment you can't wonder anymore. By simply dying, did you think it would be that easy? We're just starting to have fun. Okay, let's pick up the head after we chop it off. So get sword. Sward. Get head. Okay. Oh, maybe you push it in the flames. Ah, uh, jump and fire. Okay. We have to do something with it with the head, and I think pushing it in the flames is probably what we got to do. Maybe. Who knows? What the fuck is happening? What? What? It won't. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. If not, then we might have to save it and do this again another time. Uh, okay, so we had to take the head, but it's too big. I, I mean, I don't even know if we need to take the head. Okay, just go south or north. I mean, just go north. We did the, we did the bridge already. Stand on stump. Uh, put sword on stump. That's what I'm just guessing here. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Heater, how's it going? I don't know, Nick. Oh, my brain. I can't. My brain. I'm, I'm exhausted. It's one o'clock. My brain is exhausted. I, ha I have no solutions. Yeah, we have to. We have to reconvene. We have to reconvene. I don't want to, but we have to reconvene. My brain is jelly right now. It's absolute jelly. Um, this game is. Oof. All right. Let's see. Who's on? Um, let's go say hi to somebody. Ooh. Well, Nick, we'll get this again some point, right? We'll uh, get there. We'll get there. We'll, we'll eventually beat it. I know, right? Um, who is on right now? Do 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 do
Let's go say hi to... Mondo Mole number three is playing Power Wash Simulator. They're with me in this charity stream stuff, so let's go raid them. Uh, it's always good to see you, Lip and Mahito, and everybody for hanging out. Thanks so much for hanging out. We will get this done someday soon, Nick. Someday soon. Yeah, it's good seeing y'all. Hopefully, right. like, very soon so that we can... I know. We'll talk yeah. about tomorrow. Well, not necessarily doing it tomorrow, but soon. We'll talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, Nick. Uh, good night, everybody. Bye to humor. Bye.